You want to know why I use Exterminus? Guns are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotions. You, you see, in their last moments before the biomechanical phages start to turn them into goo, people show you who they really are. So in a way, I know the orcs better than you ever did. Would you like to know which of them ate your friends? In other words, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fluffenhammer. Roll the music, if you're listening to the show. But if you're watching it live, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Every man lives, not every man truly dies. Rock, let's get out of here! Guns might be that way, but let's go the other way. At some point, I could add in the music and we could do that way. But the problem is, I would need to, like, like go, you need to talk now because the yeah. music's over because you can't hear it. That's no. cumbersome, right? That, no, yeah, that, that would be cumbersome. That would be, I quite like shouting, roll the music, and then not having any music. And then not playing. having the music. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's something about that that amuses me greatly. And I don't you know, know what it is. Going you know what you should do? Nolan this evening, Gruff, as if, well, yeah? If you and your bit. family, Gruff, want to, to come down to my neighborhood and move in, like, across the street, you know, that would, <laughs> I, then I could just come around and do the show with you, and that would be way easier on me. <laughs> and you, actually. Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, one of, the, uh, one of the things I really want to do at some point is actually be able to record one of these shows in oh, person with you, too. Yes. Two. Yeah. I, I, thought, yeah, I, th I thought you were going to say, leave Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also that, yes. That's, That'd be uh... great, actually. I mean, like, I mean, if... Yeah, how would we? I mean, how would we organize that? I, mean, I suppose Can one we... of the best, you know, one of the easiest things would be at a convention or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the plan is if everything kind of falls into place for this Nottingham, uh, Nottingham, no Newcastle mm -hmm. idea I've got mm -hmm. is that we could quite easily all just sit in a room in the yeah. evening and record a show or two. You That's know? a good idea. That's a very good idea. I like that one. Mm. Um, also. Another thing I really like to do is do some kind of like live show, but you know, yes, I know this is live, but you know, I mean, like a proper live show, like you know. a proper live show with a stage yeah. and everything. Yeah, because I mean, around August, my Facebook memories just started to go. Remember all these times that when you did like loads of social stuff and you did like live shows in front of an audience at uh, TFN and Auto Assembly? Do you remember all those? Do you remember? Do you remember? Remember? Ah, uh, you little shut in. And it's like, <laughs> Fuck you, Facebook. I'd be so up for that. I'd be so up for that. If mm -hmm. I had tear ducts, they would be being used ex extensively right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a good point. Like, Andy, uh, you're in the same yeah. position as me, but much, much worse. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, you know, if we uh, if we mug Mikey and then uh, we send yeah. Mikey to your house and then you take Mikey's place and uh, there we go, problem solved. That's true. Yeah, he can, he can do my work for me for a bit. That'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah, we're just strange a, we're Irish just... man in my house who my who my granddad wouldn't know. That's okay though. <laughs> yeah, we just set up a no bear traps around uh, Mikey's yeah. house. You know. Yeah, exactly. Easy peasy. Where, where, where does Mikey say... live now? Potato farm. <laughs> I must say it was so nice running into him at TFN this year. Mm -hmm. It was great. Really, really lovely. It yeah. was the first one he'd been to for a long, long yeah, time as well. a long time. He had a panel, yeah. didn't he? He did. He, he, he did. was actually mm -hmm. doing a panel, which was great. Yeah. yeah. Talked about dinosaurs and robots. Yeah, and, uh, that's fabulous. That's... That was his usual specialties, you know, but, you know, I oh, think yeah. he probably did an okay job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, From my usual stuff. Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys, anyhow? Good. Yeah, yeah, all right. Not bad at mm. all. I mean, very into the hobby at the moment. Like, very into the hobby. Yeah, me and George did a uh, podcast uh, only a few days ago. Two days mm -hmm. ago, in fact, we uh, we did Moonbase Two together. We did, we did. It was great fun. Yeah, great fun that was. I don't often do like Transformer related videos or things anymore, but it really felt refreshing. It was really good. What did you talk about? Hmm? Hmm? We uh, we bitched about Transformers from the nineteen eighties. <laughs> yeah, the, the idea of the fill in show is basically to go through the catalogs from like nineteen eighty three to future days. So we got mm -hmm. we basic. I, I thought we'd get through further, but we we got up to uh, we, me and George and uh, Big Swing and D. We're doing mm -hmm. nineteen eighty six, uh, and we only got to do the Autobot side because there yeah. wasn't <laughs> enough time to even do the second side. Oh, there was, it was good. It was great yeah. fun. You know, we got to talk about Ultra Magnus and Metroplex and the Protector bots and the aerial bots, which we decided were kind of shit. You know? Well, they are. Yeah, they are. yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Have I ever told you guys about my Metroplex story? I no, don't think I so. Think so. No. so um, Christmas, it must have been 86. I don't think it was 87. Um, I really wanted Metroplex, like mm. really, really wanted Metroplex. And he turns up, uh, you know, Christmas Day, he opened up, oh, it's Metroplex. Oh, wow. um, and of course, being an 80s toy, he is encased in polystyrene. Yeah. And... If anyone knows, I have a, like an actual phobia of polystyrene. <laughs> it makes me it makes me want to throw up. I hate it. Um, like, I'm not kidding when I say that. That's not hyper. That it, literally polystyrene makes me want to throw up. It makes my teeth hurt. It makes my want, eyes uh, itch. I want it, to know what that's called. I don't know. I don't know. But it it mm, polyphobia. Uh, so I got my dad to open it, and he gets it all up, and I. Get it out the polystyrene, like mm -hmm. shuddering at the touch of it on my skin. Pick him up, yeah. and the bottom half just drops straight off. Yeah, like just broke clean in half. Oh, yeah, I can. Um, yeah. So there was a part that Christmas day of me and my dad with a Metroplex in parts, oh. building a new uh, middle section for him to, so we could still transform and everything. Brilliant, brilliant. So it's like one of my best Christmas memories is that. Oh, it's brilliant! Like, That's a fun though, project. Yes. It, you know, just after Christmas dinner, instead of watching TV, we're just sitting there and um, repairing Metroplex, just building a new Metroplex bit. Excellent. Was, well, you and your dad locked in a room getting high off glue. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should say that. No, but today um, I spilled <laughs> some. My polystyrene glue fell off the um, the shelf, uh, which don't you can see back there. Um, <laughs> and I came in here before, and there was just the pools of polystyrene glue oh, on the. No. <laughs> I was like, I have to close the window now. Yeah. Oh, God. So if I start getting a bit wacky later on, that's why. Mm -hmm. you know Are you going to turn into the, the new frog logo that we've got? <laughs> <laughs> Same eyes. Oh, we're going to be doing some frog stuff later on. Mm. Oh, we need to get some frog sounds for the soundboard. I suppose we do at this point, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, will, I will do what I can with that. But whilst I look at that, how about George? Mm. What have you done in the last few weeks since last we spoke? Oh, because God. in the last few weeks, there's been lots of things. Yeah, so much. So much. It's, you know, it used to be the case that I would always say, oh, I've been too busy. I haven't had time to do anything. I've done so much. I, c I don't think we've even got time to talk about it. I've been like busy putting together the Tyranids from Leviathan, the Leviathan box set. Mm -hmm. the, um, lots of little gaunts. Lots of the neuro gaunts are together now. Those are cute as hell. They are cute as buttons. They are absolutely brilliant. <laughs> um, the Termagants put those together again brilliant love them they're a bit bigger these days the new ones are quite large they're quite chunky for termagants really yeah they're they're, they're, they're decent size you know mm -hmm. they've scaled them up a little bit um those termagants i can't remember what they're called barb gaunts is it the ones with the the, the symbiotic weapon that's controlling yeah, yeah. Them? Mm. awesome uh... awesome minis i mean like really absolutely stunning i'm I've, i'm kind of into the tyranids this edition i'm, I'm okay. quite surprised you know this these new tyranids are amazing they're absolutely amazing i think they've got the aesthetic just just bang on now mm -hmm. i'm yeah. very very pleased everything i've seen of them i have really liked um, yeah considering that it's like oh, they're not the tyranids i want it's mm -hmm. like no they're not but they're something else and to be honest with you, they're fantastic. Yeah. I, 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 I'm even looking at stuff and thinking, oh, you know what? I kind of want to expand these Tyranids. I actually want to, It's done its job. The Leviathan box set has done its job. I actually want to get more stuff to put with them. Well, you mm -hmm. want to get the Lictors and, and yes. the Variants, right? Oh, Surely. No yes. doubt. Absolutely. And I would even go so far as to get one of those really big things. What were they called? The new really big Tyranids. Oh, the, se the sexy about. one with the capes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Jesus! The, the, you know the night think. scale thing. Well, you oh. need you specifically, George. Need two of them so you can do the Slanesh <laughs> version. Yeah. Yes. And the Tyranid version. Of Just course. because we. Well, I mean, we talked about how good it would be and fairly relatively easy to make him Xenobitey, Cenobitey. Oh yeah, I think so. I think or homunculus. Really well. I suppose they could work as a homunculus yes. as well, right? Oh my God! Yes. Yeah, and you know, almost anything from the like the Hemunculi Coven's sub army of the Drakari. I think you you just you're in a playground there with the new Tyranids. You could make so much fun things out of them. Oh god, yeah. 
I mean, on top, you know, on top of that, I've also been like adding to my my Death Guard and my Thousand Sons, and putting just cobbling together bits of things for my Empress children, like experimentally. So mm-hmm. eventually, I'm coming. I'm hopefully going to come out of this with forces of three of the four great powers. What about the fourth? Corn. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Have no problem with Corn, but he's the least interesting for me. Mm-hmm. He oh. is the least interesting. What if, if I, you uh, went down the martial prowess and yeah, obsession that's and had given more wheelbarrows <laughs> wheelbarrows for the skulls yeah wheelbarrows mm, full of skulls absolutely yeah you know. um if i did do a world eaters army it isn't going to be for a long time no. um they'd have to be about a bit out of left field you know and it'd yeah. probably start with angron to be honest because i just that miniature is freaking ace i mean it's it's just the best it's such a good piece of work what if you could do one where the what are the guys called that are, they've got nine demons inside them? Oh, the, the eight bound. <laughs> it, yeah, eight yeah, bound. The eight bound. Yeah. There is no way of saying that sentence and it not making me laugh. It's uh, it's impossible. Um, what if you could make them battle line and then you had a demonic infusion army? Well, funnily enough, I mean that's what the the ninth ed world eaters codex does. There is a sub army in that that allows you to do exactly that. Um. Oh. It's it's all corn demons and demon related things. So like the mm. eight bound, for example. So they, it wouldn't surprise me at all if as and when the World Eaters Codex comes out, which by the way isn't even on the map for tenth ed yet. No. No. So like we're talking the end of 2024, 2025 for that. You know, mm. um, I imagine that will be an option. And of course, I mean tenth ed, you can just do it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what's so lovely. Hmm. You can just do it. You don't need any like sub army to do it. You can just do it. If you want an army of eight bound, take an army of eight bound, you know? Um, that yeah, would be <laughs> very tell you guys that I worked out how to do a spindle drone army. In oh, that would be ace. I that think so, be... yeah. Yeah. Do you know how many spindle drones I'd need to make it work? A lot. Wasn't it like 90? <laughs> oh, oh, 120. <laughs> oh, oh, 120 to make it go. Wow. Yeah. 120 and 10 guardians. <laughs> <laughs> It would be one of those cheap armies, you know, mm-hmm. like the Gene Steeler cult and the Imperial Guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know. I mean, what's really impressing me with Tenth Ed as well at the moment is I'm I'm surprised that they, I, and I'm very pleasantly surprised they're taking their time with it. Mm-hmm. So, like, no codices yet, which yeah. actually, bravo, good, excellent. Yeah, absolutely. You know, take your time and get them right. Yeah. Well, look at on... what's working. Look at what's not working. Balance them out. Make them work. On last week, was it last week I met you, Andy? Last Monday. Last Monday. Um, me and Andy were talking about this, and it's the Games Workshop does need to slow the hell down. Mm-hmm. Because the last year, if you look back on the last year, every weekend has had a big release. Yeah. And they've uh, all been corkers as well, haven't they? So there's mm-hmm. stuff you want. It's stuff that like you want but probably can't afford, right? <laughs> Well, that's just my life. <laughs> that's fair. And when, you know, when I say you, yeah, I mean us generally. I mean us <laughs> generally, you know. <laughs> I, I want a full roast chicken. I can't afford it. Um, <laughs> and of course, all the roast chickens in my local Tesco's now have security tags on them. So, uh, <laughs> read into Welcome that what you will. Post Brexit UK, people. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the more it's mental getting things. more like the Imperium of Man, I can tell you. I look forward to going to Tesco's for some extra value corp starch. Yeah, I was going uh, to say, yeah, we're not that. You, you, you joke. You <laughs> joke. I, 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 it wouldn't surprise me if it's happened, if there's a discussion, if, if something like that has actually been mooted at some point in some behind the scenes discussion, you know? Oh, I don't. Yeah. I don't want soiling green. I just want proper human flesh. You know, don't yeah, take no, that right. away from me. Yeah, you, you, you want to around the bush, right? The yeah. hand, you, right? You want to get a shrink wrapped hand. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. There's no Dude, hiding in it. What? Uh, okay. Well, let me sell you on this idea. What looks better, a nicely grilled human steak, right, or mm-hmm. soiling green, which just looks like a brick of green? It just. It looks. Like green stuff, it looks worse yeah. than a uh, than a uh, a Weedabix biscuit <laughs> just without any milk on it. Right? <laughs> so and green never looked appetizing. No, if I just had right. you a steak and you ate it, you'd be like, oh, that's tasty, that is. The same, I mean, uh, by that's all you made Sam. Oh, Sam's you know, great. Yeah. The same is also true of corpse starch in the, the four, in 40k. Apparently, it's yeah. not very nice. Yeah, don't yeah. beat around the bush. Just give me human meat. Just I'll eat just human beings, right? Yeah, I, I want to take this back a couple of sentences. Andy, right. yeah. are you telling me you want meat a Oh, <laughs> 
No, like, no, because I don't like Weetabix and I don't want meat flavored Weetabix either. No, no, no it's, it, it's Meatabix. You pour milk on it for breakfast or gravy on it for lunch. <laughs> Meatabix. Versatile. Yeah. Right? Mm. I don't like the idea of milk on anything meat like. No. It just doesn't sound. The gravy, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. I can, you know, I can get behind yeah, that. Yeah. Milk? Ugh. Mm. There's Milky a time meat. and a place for milk and it's not meat. I know some recipes that work with with that, but no, no, they're very few and far between. With human flesh or with milk, Mr. Not George? with human flesh necessarily, <laughs> okay. but with meat no. in general. You, know? you are a big fan of Hannibal, so I had to jerk. I am indeed. I am indeed. <laughs> this is so weird. We had this discussion actually on an episode of Hannibal recently where we were actually discussing the ethics of, of like consuming human meat and whatnot. Mm. That, was, that was really interesting. Um, where did you fall? Were you okay with it? Well, no, well, it's one of those weird things. Like, <laughs> well, well. One, of, one of our party is a vegetarian, and his his perspective is, if drawing the arbitrary line, there's there's almost like an arbitrary line as to like what types of meat you are willing to consume for ethical mm. purposes. Yeah, and from his perspective, Hannibal represents like the ultimate morality in that regard because he doesn't draw a line at all. He there's no hypocrisy whatsoever. He doesn't draw any distinction between one type of meat and another, other than in terms of its aesthetics, right? Mm -hmm. So its flavor or its look or whatever. It, like the notion of eating human meat is in no way immoral to Hannibal, mm -hmm. um, but and no no other form of meat is either. So like stuff that people have problems with, like veal, for example. The, now the anti-veal crowd, I have no time for whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's it's ill informed and it's hypocritical. You know, yeah. um, if you're eating meat at all you've eaten stuff that's younger than veal, you know? And that tends to be the basis upon which most people hang their morality about that. Um, it's bizarre to me that it's a one or the other. It's all or nothing, you know? I would and say, I, however, uh, I worked for BCMS during mm -hmm. the uh, the cattle uh, mad cow disease crisis. Oh, in the really? Oh, God. Um, oh, yeah. That was fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and... I will say that the only thing that really stands in my way from a morality point of view of eating human flesh is I'm sure that's going to make you really sick. Oh, yeah, it will eventually because yeah. there's, there's lots of – your body's not meant to take it. You know, you're not mm -hmm. meant to eat human flesh, and it does all sorts of terrible things to you if you eat it in a, a, over a prolonged amount of time. There's like a mental degeneration that happens, yep. for example, if you eat exactly. human meat over, over too long a period. Um, I did know what that was called, but I can't think what it yes, is. Yes, there is a Spunk name for it, isn't there? Spunk it's something like spunkification. But it's yes, because it's like a fungus, isn't it, that develops yeah. in the brain and causes That's it to it. shrink. It effectively causes it to shrink um it's fascinating it's absolutely fascinating warhammer ladies and gentlemen yeah but warhammer yeah 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 let's let's uh <laughs> let's dive into warhammer <laughs> uh, andy yeah? has, have you been up to much uh no uh, I've, I've continually looked at the weather over the mm. past few weeks and went oh i should do something and it's just gray and miserable and i go ah, never mind yeah. mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. mind yeah. <laughs> I'll, you know what'll happen? It'll get to like um like the the rainy seasons when I can't actually go out and do any um airbrushing no. or uh base coating, and I'll be like, oh, I should have done some earlier. God damn it! Because it happens every year. I'm like, oh, I could do some <laughs> stuff. The the main thing I'd like to do is because my oh. mate uh, has moved house, uh, and I'm waiting to go to like mm. the hobby shop on the way to his so I can buy some um paint so I can paint up like. So I can base coat my my thousand suns, my mm -hmm. my space wolves, oh, very nice. uh, my um, um, uh, word bearers, and ultramarines from the Horus Heresy uh, battle packs from you know however many years ago. Uh, Burn of, yeah. of Calf, Prospero Burns. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like very that. nice. But because he, nice. he's moved house, he doesn't want me to come down till it's done. I'm like, I don't need it. Your ah. place have a carpet, but he wants he wants to have it all set up before I come down to see him. So I'm just kind yeah. of like looking at my watch, waiting before I can go and get those paints and secure myself. <laughs> kind of a shame. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Are you going to paint them as word bearers, Andy? The, the yeah. Bearers? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's the Horus heresy set. I'd like them. Oh, to, so and, and they're like, got to, yeah. yeah, because it's the board game for them. And it's yeah. like thematic. It's like, I want them oh, to right. be playable for that board game. Cool. Cool. That's another chaos army I've always wanted to do for 40k, the word bearers army, because I frigging love them. Of the undivided if, legions. Yeah, I think them. if you want to do word bearers, you have to learn how to make tiny scrolls and paper parchment yeah, and stuff definitely. like that. You have to, because yeah. like th th this isn't any fault of GW, but there's just not enough scrolls and parchment. Uh, no, there's you're that right. there's that one, is it an apostle? Uh the one with the he's got his head exposed, he's screaming, he's got little yeah. um 
Dark anything Apostle, and he's yeah. Dark Apostle. Yeah, he's That's close. Right. He he's he's really good. But and Very I think he has bearer. the right amount of scrolls on him for mm-hmm. uh, for a word bearer, but you you need to take that and then multiply it for every troop because every troop absolutely so loves two his Bible. options. I have two options for you. Toilet paper One. and glue. Paper no. mache style. One tin is foil the... works. Tin foil Does works it? really well. Yeah, yeah. little yeah. bits of tin foil cut up because it, it crinkles. You see, so it looks That's like true. aged aged parchment. Mm. Hmm. I was going to go for either the plague monks box set. Yes. Get a lot of Books, that. Scrolls, or the penance. Yeah. Or the frost grave wizards because you get yep. about thirty scrolls in that. Yeah, oh, wow. those would work too. Uh, mm. The other thing you can do is mix and match them with Dark Angel sets, of course, because they've got the monastic robes, which works oh, very well. Mm. That's uh, true. Yeah, you barren. just need to scrape off iconography, I'm guessing, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is easy, you know, and all yeah. sculpt on over it, like chaos symbols and things, and it works. Yeah, and they're really chaos well. anyway, so <laughs> Lamau. <whatever. laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, you of know. course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, would, you, would you take the challenge of trying to make uh, the Lionel Johnson model into a Lorgar model? That could be quite a fun project. <laughs> That would be fun, wouldn't it? Bloody yeah. hell. Some, someone like really talented with green stuff mm. and like who is insane. Give it a go. <laughs> you'd have to be because you'd need to scrape all his hair off. Uh, Lorgar's <laughs> bald, you know. Um, so yeah, that would be difficult, but not yeah. impossible. Not impossible. It would look really good. Yeah, I mean, mm. eventually they will. I mean, it'll be it. It may be like even like a decade away from now, but they will release the demon Lorgar, Obviously, you'd hope so. I mean, it's going to happen, isn't it? I mean, they they oh, have one day, to, you know. Fulgrim. I mean, we, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say one day we'll get Fulgrim. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. yeah. I mean, at least there is almost like a time frame for Fulgrim. We know that's going to happen in tenth. It may be not until the end of tenth, but it's going to happen in tenth. Lorgar is like way in the future. If they, I mean, if they do do Lorgar, then they should make it an event because he mm-hmm. is like the arch messiah of chaos, right? Yep. I, the I high do like, priest. I like the idea that someone is listening to the show and just goes, "Oh, George wants tenth." 11th edition then yeah yeah and then george <laughs> next year will be like oh we'll get it for 11th edition yeah <laughs> Look at you, george 12. Boom. they'll just keep going on well <laughs> 12 push it back. Make sense. 12 would make sense because 12, 12 is it, it's half you know half of that is six and that's the sacred number of slana yeah. uh, uh, maybe maybe <laughs> but no Lorgar would be amazing it would to see him come i mean also perturabo obviously the other demon primarch who's out there how pissy would it be if they redid Magnus before we got full Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. That would be... I mean, that would be appalling, for one thing, wouldn't it? I mean, also, why would you do it? Mag- I mean, that's going to that's gonna take some re- topping, really. No, it's, gonna have to be it's like- easy. Easy. All you do is make him into the blue Cyclops from... Uh, <laughs> you uh, can Epic. do that, though. That, you that, can, yeah. That set has the means of doing that. You can, but actually... he doesn't have the proportion. He doesn't have that no. weird, slightly hunched, silly, no, bow-legged body shape, right. which is what you'd want. So you don't like the sexy Magnus? I like the sexy. Ah, Magnus. no, I, I, I like, like sexy you know. Magnus. I'm just saying, if we're going to redo him, let's make him look silly. <laughs> let's make him look silly. Yeah, do it. Do it, do it like a like a an anniversary edition Magnus the Red, except he's blue. <laughs> it's a good idea. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, we think that Epic, the, the new Epic as it comes out, they're going to have the Demon Primarchs in there. Demon Primarchs? Mm. Or is it too yeah, early? I, mean, I don't know. I, I, don't I don't know. It depends on when it's set, doesn't it? Like, what mm-hmm. era is it's set? Isn't it Isfan 3 era? Isfan 3, Isfan no, okay, 5? No. Is that oh, when it's set? No. In that case, there aren't going to be any Demon Primarchs no. running around. I am, I am making assumptions. Either way, yeah. I, I, I don't see why they couldn't do it, because depending on how well it does, yeah. they could stretch it out. They could do S-Fan Absolutely. 3, S-Fan yeah. 5, Battle Absolutely, of Health, blah, yeah. blah, 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 and then eventually could, get uh, the Terror. Yeah, they could even do campaigns where the battles occur where the Demon Primarchs become the Demon mm-hmm. Primarchs. So the war, the war on Nuceria, where Angron becomes the Demon Primarch of Khor, the yeah. the war in that on that Elder World, where the uh, where Fulgrim ascends and so on and so forth. I'm just That'd saying, if you want to do like a new Space Hulk and call it Flight of the Eisenstein, that might be yeah, cool. wow. please with Nurgle stuff. Mm. Yeah, wouldn't Whoa. that be a nice idea? Yeah, Whoa. Gene Steelers, and you have uh, pl- um, uh, the the uh, pl- uh, the uh, the Blight Boys, and you can yeah. have in Terminators and make make the make, make the Eisenstein crew a little bit more survivable. You know, yes, a bit, but, yeah, you know, you'd that have could be to, fun. You? You'd have I think to. that's a neat idea. <laughs> I would and not it, be yeah. For that. yeah. 
Just Lovely an idea. idea. Warhammer Lovely Quest idea. Space Hulk Flight of yeah. the Eisenstein. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a g- great fun because you'd have to you'd have certain characters there. When you'd have Garrow, obviously yep. uh, Ignatius Ooh. Skrulldor. Do you, do you do that or do you sell do you sell a basic box set that has like your your sets in, and then you have upgrade sets which have the characters mm. in later? Yeah, that's probably the way to do it. Because then you could get like the the next set. Yeah. Th- this is this is the idea of like the distribution of not the cursed city. So. Everybody mm-hmm. can get it. You uh, have like the, the Garo sets, so or maybe Garo and a few, yeah. maybe a few, a few of the characters. Special rules for them, an extra mm-hmm. map, extra mm-hmm. board tiles, and then the the Grulgo set. Yeah, because he'd be have to be fun. a big boy, wouldn't he? He'd have to be massive, yeah, because yeah. he, he becomes a demon prince at that point, doesn't he? He's, mm-hmm. he's like Ooh. eaten alive by the life eater virus. And you could becomes... have the Lord of Flies as well, which would be that, nice. I've always wondered, like, how would they do that? It's such yeah. a difficult thing to realize isn't it like it is it's a swarm isn't it? it's a living swarm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um it's it, it's possible i mean it's not impossible but it's hard no I, they do it all digitally so you sculpt one fly and then you just copy and paste <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think i think you could do it uh as long as you get the silhouette of like the flies mm-hmm. in the right shape correctly yeah mm-hmm. and i yeah. think that i think they could because they've done stuff with like the the scarabs um, yes, for, you're, right, uh, you're right. You know, do little ones to just like fill out the details mm-hmm. of where the face would be and the yeah, eyes. And, I mean, and there are there are precedents for it. I mean, there's a character in the Maggotkin who's effectively that blow brot spawned. He's effectively mm. that. He's a, a swarm in like a human skin. Typhus is kind of that, isn't he? You know, he's just he's just got the armor containing yep. it. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. That I mean, that would be great. That's a great yeah. idea. It's based off a great book, so it's it's not yeah. too hard to do. Speaking of which, I'm I'm reading the buried dagger again at the moment, rereading mm. it, which is the which one where that? it all it's the one where it all goes to hell for the Death Guard. Basically, it's the one where um, they're becalmed in the warp, and um, Typhus unleashes the unleashes the destroyer plague upon them. Is that part of the Horus Heresy? Is that like yeah, a, a separate certainly book? Is. It is. Okay, so I haven't it seen. Is. I don't yeah, think it's I've really heard. good. It's it's the Mortarion close focus one. Yeah. Oh, that's one. why I haven't done it. Okay, yeah, you find it out is, so it is much actually about very, very good. It. It yeah. is, isn't it? It's you find out so much about him and what motivates him and why he is the way he is and whatnot. He's screwed from the beginning. He just doesn't have a chance. He has no chance. It's so sad, <laughs> you know. Like he's he's brought up by this evil, possibly chaotic alien thing on Barbarus, and the first human being he meets is Typhon, who's working to screw him over from the very beginning. So he's <laughs> he's. No, he hasn't got a chance, sadly. Uh, right. Uh, quickly, then, before time mm-hmm. runs out, I've got two things I really want to get into. Mm-hmm. Number one is this book. Oi! The Slaves to Darkness Age of Sigma book. This thing oh, may it's so actually... Good, right? It may be my like favourite battle term. It's so good, right? It's, 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 it's like... It is like... They put so much effort into it, right? Absolutely. Um, I mean, the stuff that stands out. Cause I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, the subtlety of the language that's used in this mm-hmm. that gives you the idea of this is a chaos who are concerned, uh, a chaos that is worried about their future because they're yeah. getting pushed back. It doesn't ever say in right, the certain words of chaos is being pushed back. It's mm-hmm. a lot more subtle than that. It's a very um, unhopeful book. Yeah, is probably the best way I put it. And the other thing which absolutely blew my mind, uh, other than the Bellicor chapter, which is yes, which is great. Oh, <laughs> oh it's good. You know um, the imagery <laughs> where he, he makes Eternus. Mm-hmm. He carries it oh. up into the Stormcast storm, and then oh. vomits the the corrupted spirits of Stormcast into him. It's like whoa, that's brilliant. But the the thing that really stood out for me is my beloved Ogroids. Yeah. Because this little bit here, it fixes my problem with the ogroids. Mm-hmm. And that's the fact that the the word ogroid is an insult. They yes. Used. They're actually called the garau, mm-hmm. which is like yeah. That's... It's because they were mistaken for ogres, isn't it? That's yep. because they're such big hulking things. Mm-hmm. They were mistaken by lesser races for ogres, and it's it is as Adam says, it's an insult to them. And it's it's such a cool thing that these guys were once like part of the um, the realms of Gorkamorka, mm-hmm. and it was up until the point where their um, their city was trashed by bone splitters, yep. and they turned to Archeon. And it's like, 
you know what? I, I love these guys completely now. Their background is amazing. I it's love them. It's really good. It's tragic. It's fun. Mm. You know, they're, they're not just monsters. They're actually very intelligent, you know? Oh, God. Gra yeah. Grau's a better name as well. It sounds yeah. more intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, it they're, does. They're, they're just really cool. And I'm not going to call them Ogroids from now on. They are the Garau. And the that's... Garau. Yeah. The only, the only downside to this entire book, though, is that for some reason, the Ogroid Thermitage is not in the rules. Uh, no, he's in one? the he's in the Disciples of Zeech. Yeah. Ah. Seems so a bit yeah, weird. But it's it's yeah. Age of Sigmar, so you just take a you just take oh, yeah, an yeah. thermometer. You know, there's no <laughs> there's no problem there. You just oh, put God, him no, in yeah. your army. You it know? just means I need to print out a warp card. It's like yeah. oh, rah, rah, rah. Um, the other thing I want to talk about uh, very quickly is I went to Nottingham Ooh, at the beginning oh, of the you? month. Oh, yeah, cool. I went to bring out your lead, which was uh, run oh, by yes. the the Foundry uh, Miniatures Company, which was a wonderful little walk back through the days of Warhammer Gone. Um, mm -hmm. And me and my brother were looking at... Uh, I ran into a, an old friend there as well, Pam, who I haven't seen in like ooh, 12, 15 years. It was like, oh, wow. It's you. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just walking by. And he went, I don't know. I was like, Pam? What are you doing? <laughs> uh, it's you. Um, so that was pretty good. Um, ran into Alec as well, Uncle Nurgling. Uh, Brilliant. Good, good chat with him. Um, but one of the really cool things was we were looking through the all the stuff they had on display. And I was looking at the Gene Sealer cult stuff and went, holy mm. shit, this is the actual, these are the miniatures from White Dwarf. What, the old ones? The metal yeah. ones? Oh, mm. God, not so not as in these are the same ones. These uh, are the miniatures that were in White Dwarf. They were actually the miniatures. Yeah. The, 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 you, those ones were the photographed ones. Yeah. yeah. The wow. ones, all the stuff they had on display were the, the actual photographed miniatures. They oh. had the, um, the Hero Quest, metal Hero Quest on the round slotter bases. Jesus, um, you know there was like, you name it, it was there. You know, were they painted was, on the back? Uh, uh, I couldn't see because they were all on like glass oh. canisters facing forward. So oh, they might. <laughs> you tell. never know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, bring out your lead was an incredible experience. I desperately want to go back next year. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> now the funny thing is that I was considering the idea of taking Joseph to TFN next year. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, with uh, Bring Out Your Lead being like the week before TFN, ah. that's probably not going to happen because yeah. I loved going to... Um... <laughs> Daddy, I want to go to TF Nation. Too bad, boy. <laughs> Too bad, boy. I'm going to go sit in a tent. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, I saw Trish Cowden. Um, uh, Trish Morrison. Uh, wow. Trish Cowden now. Who drives a very nice car. Uh -huh. um, which I just want to point that out. Her car is very, very nice. Um <laughs> The and lady who sculpts brilliant greater demons. The yeah, the the mother of monsters herself. Um, yeah, she she is cool. Uh, yeah. So like, was lucky enough to spend some time listening to John Blanche talk, and that man that, hold, absolutely that envious. man holds court. Yeah, yeah that envious man. of that. I was gonna go up and speak to him, but I just went. Mm, there is nothing I can say to you. I would literally just be going. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what you what did you say to bit. this guy? You know, hi, Dad. <laughs> you know, yeah. It'd have been something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I uh, mean, he must get it all the time as well. You know, because mm -hmm. he his work will have defined childhoods, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, Blanche is the uh, the pinnacle of um, of Old Hammer, really, isn't yeah. it? That's it, him and I Ian mean, Miller. For me, his aesthetic is forty k. For me, it, mm -hmm. it is that universe. It's what it's supposed to look like. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's always got. It's a weird one, isn't it? You you look at like Blanche's idea, Blanche and Miller, and um, who else was there? Paul Bonner and a few others. Mm -hmm. And you look at the stuff that they did, and then you look at Modern Forty K, and you're just like, it's just too clean, like normalized yeah. now, isn't it? Yes, the, the, there is a cleanliness now. Yes, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. It's that it's that impressionistic element that John Blanche brings yeah. to things, which I love anyway. I, I like impressionism in art anyway, mm -hmm. and it really fits. It really works for me. It, it makes it very Lovecraftian, don't you find? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a big wild universe out there, and there's absolutely no way to categorize everything that's in it. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think everything being much more normalized now has a tendency of removing that. Yeah, which is a I know what shame. you mean. I know what uh, you mean. He was never my favorite. I can't remember who my favorite is offhand. I'm sure I've told you before, mm -hmm. uh, Adam, but I do like a lot of his work as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He just, for That's... me, wasn't the the artist for uh, mm -hmm. that era of uh, Warhammer. But there are some really good pieces, which, are, you know, 
super defining oh, yeah. and great yeah. that I still enjoy. It, it it's funny actually because I remember at the time when like Second Day came out, I always looked at the Blanche stuff and went, I don't like that as much. Looking mm-hmm. at like the Mark Gibbons and the, uh, yeah. the Wayne Englands, and it's like this is my stuff. As I've got older, it's like. This stuff is really cool, but Jesus Christ, the Blanche stuff is just amazing. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing with the Blanche stuff for me is that it's like, it's not just forty k art. Mm-hmm. He's doing something else, you know. He's try, he's experimenting. He's really like, he's letting his imagination just fly, and well, he, it's so beautiful. It's a guy that like you know studied like all oh, this really weird baroque Gothic art from like hundreds of years ago oh, yeah you and he can brought tell. that oh yeah oh i mean so. he's got he's got so many influences i mean renaissance art is a huge one obviously yeah. you know yeah. but baroque as well there's a real baroque influence and gothicism i mean for god's mm-hmm. sake yeah there's lots of that going on there but yeah so honestly um oh no uh, uh tony pierce as well was there and i was talking to Talking to this guy for a little while, it's like, yeah, no, this is my first time being here. Oh, really? I've been here like four or five years now. Oh, really cool. <laughs> and uh, we're walking away, and uh, Andrew just goes, "That was Tony Pierce." So, was it? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> um, yeah, there's, a, there's quite a few people there. It was, it was a really good weekend, and honestly, uh, George, I think you should come next year. Yeah, that should. sounds uh, like loads of fun. That um, really does sound fun. Games that were being played. There was a third Ed Warhammer Fantasy Battle game. Wow, um, God, which, early days, right? Oh, God, yeah, um, which was absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a Necromunda game called Hell's, Hell's Reach, which I was Reach, yeah. people just throwing everything on the table. <laughs> uh, and I, I remember just sitting there watching the game for a little while because we didn't play as much as I'd like to, but that was uh-huh. there was so much going on that I didn't quite know where to go and how to get yeah. involved and stuff. So. Uh, for the first year, that was fine. Me and Andrew, uh, at one point, me and Andrew just um, and Pam just set up a uh, a little corner and just started painting, and people were just coming over and talking to us. It's like, oh, oh no, 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 we're, we're not, we're not anyone official. Not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you should have promoted the fluff and hammer. Yeah, did, yeah. As, as, oh yes, we're the fluff and hammer, don't you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at my t-shirt. Uh, one of the, the highlights, of course, was uh, I had about five or six compliments on my. Um, Bubbling Chaos of Podcasts t-shirt. Fantastic. Like, That's a really good t-shirt. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I made it yeah. myself. Um, <laughs> which, which is really cool. Uh, made brilliant. me very happy. You need um, to make some uh, new t-shirts at some point. New I do. Hammer ones. I still wear the, the one that you gave me for um, uh, the one with the squibbly eldritch monster thing. I still wear yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great chaos. t-shirt. We've yeah, got about 10 t-shirts uh, for sale on the shop. Um, they, they don't sell very well, to be hmm. honest. So it's one of those things. Maybe I should just start like forcing them down people's throats yeah we need to start uh, promoting them then if that's the case yeah yeah i mean, yeah. What, I also, I mean we need to do some more patreon stuff as well definitely yeah uh, time uh, time yeah, is time is the thing time is look at the frog I look I at him <laughs> i'm going to be uh reworking the patreon i think um <laughs> end of this month to try and make it work a bit better because uh, I have failed the Patreon. And <laughs> it's just one of those things. Uh, I need to rework it a bit to make it a bit more realistic. But anyhow, um, and then of course on the Sunday, me and my brother went to Warhammer World. Um, oh, brilliant. And walking around Warhammer World with him was like watching a kid go to Disneyland. It was yeah. incredible. He uh, he was absolutely just over the moon watching, like looking at all the bits and bobs. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys have seen the um, the giant table at Warhammer World. <laughs> the one that... Uh, the one where you come out onto a floor and you have to go down the steps around the display to get to the oh, next yeah. floor to see it at the bottom. It's like... Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's massive. It's so incredible. I was waiting for that coming out and we opened the door and you saw it and he just let out this little noise like... Ah. <laughs> like there we go. Oh, uh, uh, we... Monk asked if you found the assassin. We tried. Because oh they move it every God. time, don't they? They do. Every time someone yeah. finds it, they move it again. They move the assassin. That's yeah. great. Yeah. There is there is it's a competition, a game, isn't it? Right? Yeah. It's a yeah. game, yeah. You get that's a free assassin. You get a free assassin if you can find the assassin. Oh, that's um, ace. But the thing is, it's such a big display. That's mm-hmm. 
the only way you're going to find it is by accident, right? No, oh, yeah. no, no. There's a way. There'll be a way. You just need to program an AI uh, into your phone to do it. So you uh, scan it, and it'll do it for you. Go there. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it'll change that in the future because that'll probably what will ha- be what happens. You know. Yes. Yes, I know. Taking all the fun out of everything. <laughs> uh, D- Darren says there must be a thousand minis on that thing. There's more, mate. There is more. Don't I mean, you there's. Just, I mean. Don't you just wish that we'd called it something different? Because it's not fucking AI. It's not AI in the sense that most people would understand what AI is. I don't know. I mean, calling it it's a, a um, abominable insult works really yeah, well as far as I'm a, concerned. A plagiarism machine is a good mm. term, you know, a piracy machine. Uh, oh, anyway, it's, it, it, yeah, that, that's for another. That's for a Patreon episode, that is. <laughs> Patreon episode where it's just the three of us shouting about AI. <laughs> yeah. Loud to fucking draw. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, um, that weekend was absolutely spectacular. And, <laughs> uh, I'm desperately, I very much want to go back here next year. I don't see a reason why I shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Shut up, large car. Um, and I. Would say if anybody else wants to come along, I'll be more than welcome to uh, well, to sort out a uh, an if Airbnb people want for to know, people. Where, where can people find it? Where is it? Where's it held? Uh, it's uh, well, it, <laughs> this is where it gets problematic. Uh-huh. So this was the last year in its current place, uh, which mm-hmm. is a fucking carriage stable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that not the best thing in the world? That's um, awesome. A t- yeah, attached it. to a hall, which is owned by the Ansel family. Read into that one what you will. Right, um, okay. But they're selling the hall, so as a result, the foundry is right. going to be moving. Uh... Um, and where they're moving, they don't quite know yet. But hopefully, they get that sorted, and they can uh, they can run everything. Mm-hmm. From You'll probably adver- advertise on the Facebook and the Discord when yeah. you find out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but the, the highlight is, because of the, the place there are, it's quite remote, which is mm-hmm. brilliant, right? So you're quite remote. There's a beautiful little church on the, on the hill, um, mm-hmm. and there's just like field all around you and this beautiful <laughs> uh, carriage stable right as we were driving down this guy jumped out in front of the car and said stop 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 it's like why right, what's going on do not park down there you're better off parking here and walking the the half mile down to the um down to the place all right okay <laughs> well, what's wrong it's just a quagmire down there <laughs> um and it was it, it was <laughs> just absolute quagmire uh, cars were getting stuck and there were like people with like logs trying to get oh, the cars out God, no. um, well, i shouldn't laugh i really shouldn't but me and Andrew came out for a bit of fresh air and for a, a walk around and, and things. We went to have a look around the church. As we're standing up the hill to the church, we're just watching these cars start to slide oh, down the hill. No. It's like, <laughs> oh, shit. That's, shit um, yeah. that's a lot of mud. Yeah, and the cars were uh, just yeah fully braked and everything. Nobody in them. Just starting to slide. It was like... <laughs> That's when they got to the good. bomb, was it like uh, watching the uh, the horse die in uh, Never Ending Story? Did they just sink? <laughs> like people were reaching out. No, <laughs> don't give up, car. You can make it. Oh my god! I pray you. Yeah, um... No lock dragon to save you, <laughs> Peugeot. No. Right. Shall we get on with the the news stories of the last few yeah, weeks? Before we have a fair few. No, there's, a, there's a lot going on, isn't there? Mm. Yeah. So we're going to kick things off then with the end and the death volume three, Ooh, the final yes. cover. Yes, I that was have. A shocker. I have thoughts about this that I want to get into. Yeah, it's a real shocker. I mean, like it was. They did definitely say it was going to be two books, didn't they? They did. Yes, they did, didn't they? Yeah, I, I, I you know, uh, but it, from what I mean, it's hard to tell whether it's like it's it's it is. I, I assume it is Abnet's decision. This. Well, from what the what they were saying is that they can't mechanically print it as one book, <laughs> like oh. physically. Yeah, <laughs> so that's it's where too it, big. Yeah, it, that's why it's been split into two because awesome. they cannot mechanically put a book that large together; it would collapse. I wonder Funnily how many enough. pages it is then, because how many Lots. pages can a yeah. machine do? Well, funnily enough, that's what happened to me with Born in Blood. It was meant to be one volume, but my publisher said it's too big. You have to split it into two. You be physically. Is that, is that how many? It. How many pages was it for you that had to be split? Oh, it was. Do you a remember? Lot. It's an awful amount. They're too. Have you seen those volumes? They're mm-hmm. bloody huge. Oh, They're well, really. You've got. Oh, thank, yes. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, right. I like to support so, you there, George. <laughs> thank you so much, man. But the, yeah, no, the, I, I can. T- I can understand that from a publishing point of view, because like you physically books, like if they reach a particular vol, like a particular size, they're impossible to print properly. They 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 fall apart. You know. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and uh, well, you had that problem with um, some of the printings of Lord of the Rings back in yes. the day. Yes, yes, you did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless you are working with some of the most top-notch print. I mean, we're talking like in the sort of late seventies, early eighties mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Um, those that had the top, most top-notch printers in the world, those things would just start falling apart after a couple of reads. Yeah, because they were just too heavy, and they'd pull themselves off the cover. Yeah, and it wasn't really meant to be printed that way anyway. It's no. like you know, several volumes. Oh, absolutely, and uh, but I, so, yeah, I, I, it's it's an interesting one. This, I mean, I I was a little concerned because like the the first end end in the death, as we've already discussed, it 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 doesn't leave much seemingly in the story. I think what it's going to end up doing is so we know that the second book is going to be basically sanguous, sanguous, Sa- it's sanguineous, sanguineous and horus, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's that's so, what it seems to be. I'm not going to be surprised if a big chunk of that book is actually dedicated to Rogel Dawn. Yeah. Um, and what he's gone through. Say the name. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, and to be honest with you, more of Rogel Dawn in the uh, the bastions yes. of corn. Yeah. Um, I'm up for I'm, that. Totally absolutely. up for that. <laughs> Sorry, just highly amused by Andy saying I don't want to be married off for the fluff and hammer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of dowry uh, would we get for Andy? Well, the the idea is I'll be married off to someone in the Ansels family, so <laughs> you know. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> so I the share would GW. Be... Yeah, twenty five percent stake in the company. Um, you know what, uh, you know what Brian Ansel it's... actually does nowadays? No? It's a big company, Andy. You know, it's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. nothing to yeah, sneeze at. No, I know. Yeah, the, the mighty warlord himself, Brian Ansel. Do you do, do you guys actually know what he does for a job nowadays? No it's... idea. He replicates cathedral parts. Oh, fucking hell. Of course yeah. he does. Of course he does. So oh, he, I... was, he, um, he, he was like replicating a scepter the, uh, a couple of months back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just what the shit? Because you do, right? Because yeah. you do, right? What, what a hell of a job that is. Mm. Um, but yeah. Um, Interesting, right? This is, I'm this in is two minds about this. Because on one hand... I understand why it's been split into three because, yeah, yep. mechanically it has to be a, uh, a certain size to be able to be printed. But I don't know if there's going to be enough to fill two more books. That's my especially, concern. Especially if they're the size of mm. the, the first end and the death. That because... said, I mean, it, it, it is one of those things where I keep going back and forth. That worries me that there's not enough story to tell and that it's going to be like too bloated and synthetically mm. expanded. On the other hand, there is so much in the wider Horus Heresy series that needs tying up. And yeah, there's the metaphysics yeah. at play as well, which has been like blown open by the end and the death. That All the stuff you thought was happening from the original overview of the Horus Heresy, it seems isn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's all this stuff that seems to be suggesting that it isn't going to be quite as simple as mm-hmm. we've been presented. Where yeah. about the end it? When where do you think it ends? Do you think it ends with Sanguinius dead uh, and the Emperor dead? I don't. Uh, know. Do you think it ends on an epilogue when um, they go off to uh, kill the, the the chaos that have been uh, that my, are in the street? What my guess is that it ends with it, it's it's going to be dual barreled. It's going to be the Emperor being interred on the Golden Throne and mm. Abaddon ripping the talon of horus from Mm -hmm. horus's body and ordering the the vengeful spirit away into the warp um i don't know if it'll stray into the scouring i think what they might do with that is actually do another series of books for the scouring because that's such a big period yeah Uh, yeah my my guess would be the scouring is going to be is going to be its own thing yeah i i think there will be an epilogue and i think it will be um placing all the pieces Mm-hmm. for the scouring but i think that this story does end with the emperor being interred i yeah. think you're probably right there actually it it very much it's very likely going to be abaddon um taking the power claw the uh the, the talon the, the talon of horus as well as the emperor being interred as a a singular event so yeah. to speak. Like switching um, back and forth, yeah, right? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Yeah. Because they are like two halves of the same coin, aren't they? It would make sense Absolutely. to do it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what fascinates me is what they're going to do with it and how far Abnet's going to take it because he's demonstrated a propensity to really like break the rules with this series thus far. Mm-hmm. Like 
that Horus is another entity, isn't it? He's actually very different from how we've been presented. We've always been presented with Horus as a dupe of the dark gods. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to be the case in these books. It seems to be he's Ooh. trying. He's it's the other way round, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. It's, he's uh, trying to become the dark god, right? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the dark king. I mean the. It's interesting, actually, because the the way that William King wrote it way back when was there was that moment of clarity when the Dark Gods realised that Horus had failed and they fled. Yeah. And Horus has that moment of, oh God, what have I done? Kill me now. Yeah. I don't think that's going to exist here. I don't I think. either. It's going to be, it, it would be odd if it did almost, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's going to be a much more of the uh, Horus trying to hold on to them as they try mm -hmm. to leave. You know. Yeah. I'm intrigued to see how you stretch out Sanguinis and Horace's fight, um, because that's there's a, yeah. The issue I've got there is that could get a little bit too Naruto, where it just yes. goes on and on and on and on and I mean, on and on. You can do it with the Emperor and Horus because yeah. their mm -hmm. fight is is not just the physical. In fact, the physical is almost incidental, isn't it? It's metaphysics mm -hmm. as well. My guess is, I mean, this is the way I'd do it if I were writing it. You'd switch back and forth between the physical battle. And yep. a metaphysical battle, which isn't a battle at all. It would be almost like a discussion or a game of regicide or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we've seen um, Horace and the Emperor have these like metaphysical discussions yep. by the tree, haven't we? We have multiple mm. times now. Um, so yeah, I can see that continuing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just for, it's the idea that there's a middle book to the end and the death, and that's yeah. that's what throws me. Uh, I can see how you fill the third one. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I can. Yeah. I can't see how you feel the second one. Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? It's unusual. Then again, maybe it'll two towers it and it will be the best of them. Who knows? Mm, could be. Could yeah. be. I mean, it's, it's Abnett, so you know, I've got a lot of faith. because Me too. I've got a lot of time of Abnett stuff is good. Yeah, and the um, things he... he's been talking about in the interviews and whatnot, he's, he's a writer's writer. When he talks, all I see is like, yeah, this guy lives by his imagination, and I understand what he's saying, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and this is clearly his magnum opus. I don't think he would have let it go if it wasn't good, you know, if it wasn't what yeah, he wanted yeah. it to be. So, which, is, which is probably why it ended up in three parts. Yeah, because, that uh... may be it. That may be it. It may be just like, right, this is this is my baby. It's going to be what I want it to be. You know, mm -hmm. I began this series. I'm going to end it. And boy, am I going to end it. <laughs> what do you guys think of the two covers? Love them. I've got to say, I really love them. I, th there's certain details that are fantastic. I love the four thrones behind Horus. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the Zichin throne has just floating bits around it. Yeah. And Nogal's throne's just a load of bones just bolted bones, together. Right, yeah. it's cool. I'm surprised yeah. it's not just slop. Just yeah, <laughs> filth, right? Yeah. yeah. Just a big old pile of, like, the big old pile of poo from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> just that. Yeah, Nogal's poo throne. Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. That could be Slanesh as well, depending on your proclivities, but you know. That's true, yeah. You have to fight um, for the poo throne. It's mine. No, it's mine. <laughs> I want the poo throne. Poo for the poo throne. <laughs> Slop for the shitty lords. <laughs> um but yeah, I, it's there's a lot here that I'm hopeful about, but um I'm just we I, I don't know. It's it, it's, it's concerning, isn't it? Because you want it to end yeah. well. Yeah, I do. You do. I do. That's the thing, right? It's yeah. been going for so long. There's so much investment in it. So many writers have gone through it. You you want it to be good, don't you? And also, I mean, like the Solar Wars series has generally been excellent. Mm -hmm. Oh god, so, yeah, it's been it's been the best the Horus Heresy has been since totally, the beginning. You know, totally. yeah, I, without a shadow of a doubt, it has. So. But I mean, it yeah. makes sense why you're concerned. I mean, you hear "Let's make it longer," and you go, "Oh, yeah. the Hobbit! Oh no!" Yeah, exactly mm -hmm. that, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, so exactly. it makes sense. It does, it does. And then you've got mm. the third cover, of course, with uh, Horus and the Emperor and Terra just like you know, ravaged in the background. Mm -hmm. The only thing I don't like about this cover is I don't know why, but it does remind me of Battle for the Abyss. It does a bit, the, the, the dynamic yeah. is a little bit Battle for the yeah. Abyss. Yeah, yeah, I, I love the that. colors and everything. I think yes. it looks good. It's, um, it's a great cover, it just it makes me have horrible flashbacks. Yes, that's all. It's the association, it. isn't it? it exactly. Is the association. <laughs> One thing I absolutely love about both these covers is the use of black uh, mm. on Horus. Yeah, I like that. Like that weird, like he's not physical, is he? He's like, no. like mm -hmm. just darkness is just oozing out of him. Yeah, yeah. he's become something else now, hasn't yeah. he? He's, he is the Dark King, right? This this new entity that we've never heard <sighs> of before. Imagine, right? If during the uh, battle for uh, 
but you got the Emperor and Horus at the end of their fight, right? Mm -hmm. And we all know that uh, uh, Pius walks in, or an unnamed Terminator, or yeah. an unnamed Guardsman, you know, one of them runs in. What if it's Abaddon? Oh, that would be fascinating. And Abaddon it? is so sick of Horus's shit. It's <laughs> Abaddon that does it. It's Abaddon <laughs> that shoots Horus in the head. <laughs> God, that would be interesting. Because he's already tipping, isn't he? He's already seeing yeah, the flaws it, in, yeah, at the yeah. end of uh, the first uh, end in the death book. But... <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm in love with this idea now. I, I want Abaddon to be the one that just walks in. Mm. Like the Emperor's using the William King stuff. The Emperor's eye has boiled out and yeah. his arm's been ripped off and he's not sure if he can win this. And Abaddon just walks in and smashes Horace in the face with like yeah. a, a two before or a steel <laughs> chair. <laughs> yeah. Oh my it god, does, it's Abaddon with a steel chair. It does look like Abaddon's going to be more present because he mm. is he is involved in that. It, not in the, the battle between Horus and the Emperor, no. but he is on the vengeful spirit while it's going down. Mm -hmm. And he does fight with like uh, custodies and uh, Imperial Fist Terminators, I do believe. So mm -hmm. yeah, there'll be a section dedicated to him, certainly. Oh yeah, and but what if it's if it's not Abaddon, and what if it's a remembrance? Uh, one one of the many, <laughs> and what if they have a gun? They turn it sideways because that's the kill shot, and then they <laughs> they put it on the side of Horace's head, and they say, "Remember this, remember oh, this." Like <laughs> and the Emperor's just like, "Oh, oh. shit!" Yeah, shit, oh, shit, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, moving on. Yes, yes. Next story, we've got ourselves some uh, yeah, hill team oh, because Gallo Dark has rules now for everything. The big uh, annual for 2023 has all of the Gallo Dark rules in with all of the Gallo Dark um, hill teams, which is really cool. Let me cool. tell you before you go on why I don't mm. think this is a good book, right? Okay. Okay. Because I bet I haven't looked at it. I haven't read this, but I guarantee you that in the back of this, this there is not a a yellow bordered page that is in black and white that has all the models that you could buy. <laughs> I'll bet you any money there's not. I guarantee you, and there should be. What and it's shame, a fucking man. annual. Every annual I remember, it was just yeah. from page to page. You could order this mini, order that mini. <laughs> That's why it's you a shit book. Right. That's and why shit. Did you do that thing as a kid that I did where you like poured over those pages? And you were oh, like, oh, I I'm hated gonna myself. That. I'm going to get that. Yeah. You never did, fucking did, good. did you? No, did you guys ever fill out the order sheet yeah. no. with stuff no, that I you didn't. wanted? I, I, I never want to ruin my book. I didn't oh, want to yes. hurt my book. <laughs> I was so scared. It's a big book, too. Absolutely, I did. No, I, uh, I've got so many pages that are just filled in with like mm -hmm. orders and stuff. I'm looking at them going, why did I want this many orc arms? Yeah, you should, yeah. If you've still got them, you should post them off now. See if you Let's get see them. what happens. <laughs> yeah. I have in one of the... They might enough to send you some freebies. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. I have a Citadel journal that has the Thunderhawk, Thunderhawk gunship um, oh my God. order for a minute. And there is a part of me that's tempted to mail it in oh just to see God. what happens. Yeah. What, the, the battle one, the 40k one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Holy fuck. Jesus. Oh, that's a big boy. And that's heavy. Old. Big metal oh boy. boy. That is that is like you could stove someone's head in with that. <laughs> well, yeah, that you thing don't, was you don't glue it together. You have to weld it together. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, I like the fact you have to sign a disclosure that said uh, that you are a uh, a good <laughs> modeler, and uh, if you fuck it up, it's not Games Workshop's fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, That's that brilliant. was a hell of a thing. It was three hundred quid then, so I'm thinking that'd be about four and a half grand now. Yeah. Um, and the earlier on this week, I think I shared it with you, Andy. Um, I had a look to see about this new Optimus Prime that's coming out, the mm -hmm. the G1 toy that's got the added things, and it's like oh, 100 yeah. and, 108 quid. I went, really? Nah, yeah. nah, yeah. you're all right, thanks. Yeah. Um, and then I started thinking, I wonder how much that was. So, and I realised how sad this next sentence is. I opened my archive of Argos catalogues. Um, <laughs> I'm a special man. Leave me alone. And guess how much Optimus Prime was in 1984? Oh, do I want to know? No. 11.99. Yeah. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. 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 Power Master Prime was 20 quid. Yeah, I had Power Master Prime. Yeah. But bloody hell, Jesus. Yeah. 11.99. And uh, <laughs> that sent me on a rabbit hole. Yeah. But, uh, As speaking... an aside, are we not bored of that design of Optimus Prime now? Please yes. change it. Please do something different. Introduce they won't. characters or something. Please, they won't. God. 
They won't. It's, they won't do it's it. It's one of the I reasons know. Transformers doesn't interest me anymore. Yeah. It's because I'm sick of seeing the same Dan over and over so again. I'm so bored of that. I'm mm-hmm. telling you. I wouldn't even mind if they redid Armada at this point. Yeah, just just for yeah. something slightly different. Well, you can get there's a new Armada Prime and it's really good. Yeah. It's yeah. really gorgeous. You know, it's like whoa, very special indeed. And that's actually cool, right? That because it's a different mm. style. It's a different. It's something a bit different. But my God, yeah. that G1 Prime. Mm-hmm. There's so many of them. There's so many of them. And it's like, you can only do that so many times, really. You're forcing the issue now. Let him I, evolve. Um, you know, let him be something different. My uh, One of my friends, Scott, he's uh, an Optimus Prime collector. Um, mm-hmm. But when he started getting into it, he was like sending me messages like, oh, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this. Uh, do you know how many Optimus Primes there are? So I just sent him a uh, four and a half page list yeah, of all of the Optimus Primes that have come out in the last five to six years or something. Yep. It was ridiculous. Um, but besides that, anyhow. Yes, uh, anyhow, yeah. If I, was, if I was talking about Transformers, I'm just going to get negative, and I don't want to be negative. About, it's I'm great. Just... I can just use this as a Moonbase 2 Patreon episode. <laughs> <laughs> Good for me. The problem I've got with Transformers nowadays is... <laughs> <laughs> let's not. Let's not. Yeah. That will be here till, like, one in the morning. <laughs> so, yeah... Um, so this is a uh, compilation, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's all the new rule. It's all the rules all compiled and refined, yeah. and you can play all the kill teams and whatnot. It's kind mm-hmm. of cute, actually. It's a cool idea. It is. It is. And, of course, all these kill teams are getting uh, single releases as well oh, now, so that's really nice, cool. Which is nice, right? Because so, they're, they're pretty much all of them are pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside of the uh, the Drakari ones, yeah. Um, I kind of like the Drakari ones. They're not different enough from, like... No. They're okay. They're fine. But they're not different enough, are they, from normal Drakari to be noteworthy. No, uh, that's no. the problem. They're the least inspired. Like you, I think instead of doing the hand of Ar- the Archon, why not do your um, the your Greedly Cenobite? Yeah, yeah. That, I think the Homunculi covens would be yeah. way more interesting to do. Wouldn't mm-hmm. they just? Wouldn't because they? they always are, right? They're just yeah. so cool. That's just think you could have you could have the do. living lamp with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> it could yes. have a rule where it's hidden. Like if it doesn't move, no one understands or would, like notices it, and what somebody walks past and you knife them for free damage. <laughs> Add two to your save to you minus two to their save roll or something funny. Brilliant. I want to see a toilet with human legs, and it's just like <laughs> this, it's just like this is how the Drakari shit, and it's just this like this mouth is, open with teeth around the edge. The way the uh, <laughs> the way the, Dr- the the Drakari and the Hemunculi are, they'll have done that. There is mm-hmm. some Hemunculi somewhere that has done that. The the Drakari have the biggest gap between the law and the miniatures of anything that's in 40k it is annoying how much <laughs> that gap exists it's come on i want to see weird shit the uh, Drakari need to have more weird shit more just like... weird shit i mean don't get me wrong i think the homunculi common models are fantastic I oh think yeah they're yeah. so good but more, yeah more weird make yeah. them even even like more cenobitic than they are mm-hmm. and kill team is the perfect place to do that yeah so totally. So for it just to be some Drakari guys who were like, hello, yeah. we're the Drakari. It's, well, you, I mean, if you look at them compared to everything else here, they just look so tired and old. Yeah. Um, it's the face, isn't it? The yeah. face looks... I don't know whether it's just because that's the, the Eldar style of face, but yeah, there's something just kind of off about it. I don't know not what. As, not as dynamic as everything yeah. else, just not mm-hmm. as eye-catching, right? No, yeah. I do feel kind of bad for the Necron set that was just mainly a, a, a small upgrade sprue. Yes, the upgrade yeah. sprue was nice, but, <laughs> but and to be fair, the Kazakin, uh, I never, I've never seen the Kazakin uh, in stock in the GW that I go to, and nope. I've never seen them in stock on the websites. Really, like, the, the third party ones, yeah, because every because it's a Kazakin squad. It's a right. really important squad for the Imperial Army, and there's no right. normal Kazakin squad to get, so everybody has to buy this. Yep. <laughs> so it's always out. Yep, it sells out as soon as that thing comes into is stock that, anywhere. Is that the case? Right. Wow. Mm. Yeah, well, if so. you think how good Kaskins are versus your normal yeah. infantry, they're just yeah. way better. A fair point. Fair point. It's a shame. I mean, my favorite one of these ones, um, obviously the Hearthkin Salvagers, because, oh, yeah, obviously, Space yeah. Wolves. Uh, but the the Felgor Ravagers. Yeah, I by a mile for me. I fucking love those guys. Love them. Love them. And at the this fact point you can time, use them in Chaos Space Marine armies now is oh, lovely. Yeah. Hmm. The, the fact that you can actually run a full Space Beastman army mm-hmm. is something that it hurts me. I love because it. Because I really want to do it, but I can't I can't start another army. 
Yeah, oh. that would be and that would be so niche and interesting. Oh, yeah. It'd be such an odd 40k force. I mean it's it's mm -hmm. that's like that's like second ed appendix army weird. Oh god, yeah. Give yeah. me yeah. my monkeys, GW. Give <laughs> me my Otungas. <laughs> <laughs> you want your you want your uh, Jakaro uh, kill team. I just yeah, want them all yeah. monkey, all, all the little hats on. All the time, right? Denim, saw... denim hats and uh, little waistcoats and stuff and chainsaw <laughs> arms and guns. All you know smoking. The, you know the murder monkeys from the um, uh, uh, Warcry set? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Somebody, I saw somebody had painted them up as Jakaro. Honestly, I'm in. I'm in. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's very, very tempting. That's um, very cool. But yeah, hi, it's it's quite cool that they're, they're pulling everything out for, uh, yeah, for Go or Die. Nice. It's nice yeah. to see it all compiled, so you can just mm -hmm. go and get that book and you can play, right? It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's much like the uh, the end of Necromunda book, which uh, I tried to buy oh. last Monday. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck yeah, no. it was the yeah. It was the old version, if you wondered. Yeah. They didn't have huh. a new one in. Oh no! Yeah, they, it, they sold out really quick, and they had the old one on the uh, on the um, on the shelf. And the guy in the store just jumped right at me and went, "No!" He was like, "You you don't really want that one, do you? You want the new one, right?" And Gross like, "Yeah, I do." I was like, "Oh, you uh, wrong." One. Saved, right? Yeah, saved. He, did, he did a good thing. He could have been yeah. a dick and just been like, "Why?" He could have, couldn't he? You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was uh, I was actually really happy with him. It was really nice. Moving on then, should we get into some demon engines? Yeah, mm. so demon engines for Horus Heresy, yeah? Yes. So, um, yeah, there's quite a lot of really cool things here. It's basically just a, a little bit, um, what's it, the Age of Darkness, the Depths of Tridecimia? Yeah, I'm going to try and pronounce that. No, uh, Tridecimia, I'm going to say. Two I M's. It'll do. Tridecimia, yeah. Yeah, Simia, yeah. Something like that. Decimi, ah, whatever. Decimi, uh, I think. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Nonsense. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bobble de flibble, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the depths of blobbity flibble. Um, <laughs> so basically, yeah, it's just a uh, some dedicated rules are coming out for different types of demon engines, so you can run them in your Horus Heresy army. Yeah, it's, it's the it's, old uh, Forge World demon engines, yeah, isn't yeah. it? That's what it is. Yeah. And it's, I just thought it was worth bringing it up because uh, these things are gorgeous and I love them to bits. Yeah. It's nice to um, see them getting a bit more of a, a lease on life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I just love demon engines. I think yeah, demon engines are they great. are fun. Brass I scorpions mean, and all that kind of thing. Yeah, granted, none of them are anywhere near the level of quality of the original Blood Slaughterer, a, um, a farmyard <laughs> uh, murder <laughs> yeah. machine. The, the um, wheelbarrow, the Cornate wheelbarrow. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely, yep. It just was it piloted by Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, the skeletal version thereof. Yeah, the uh, the Chaos Demon Titchmarsh air. Yes, yeah, um, big and know, buff, very it angry. It literally does look like a contraction engine, doesn't it? It's like it's so old school. Oh, it's it's beautiful. It's uh, it looks like it fell off the front of a, uh, a tractor and it's just running around the fields, mm -hmm. whipping mice. It's have they ever made it. like a giant like uh, chaos combine harvester? Because I think that could be well, a quite an interesting cool. idea. That'd be very cool. Yeah, they, you know? a combine hom a harvester. Corn, combine no. harvester. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the corn bane harvester. That's how you do it. <laughs> oh. I'd have a little one. trough on the back and have like um, a, a, maybe a, a, an oversized um, uh, berserker in the back of it, just like bathing. You know, like the the fat guy from the new Dune <laughs> yeah. movie in the black goo, yeah. but just in blood. <laughs> <laughs> you could sculpt fun. him like the patriarch. You know, the old fat patriarch. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, could yeah. make him look like that. That'd be quite I like fun. That idea. I do yeah. like that idea. I I'm tempted actually to uh, to make this as, as a project. Yeah, um, it's fun. Mm. Combine harvester. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we've got slightly mm -hmm. more before we get into really interesting, bizarre places that we can't get back out of. Mm -hmm. um, so, a Jude Reed interview with how she brought the daughter of Creed to life in her, I, I, yeah. in her book. Um, I haven't read the book yet. I do intend to get hold of it at some point. I'm very uh, interested, having read this write up. I'm, I'm into mm -hmm. this. I'm into this. And I like the character as well. I really like this idea of her being the daughter of Osaka. Um, I think that's really good fun and a great way of like keeping the name alive. Yep, yep. I, uh, I do love the fact that she reminds me of Mrs. Trunchbull from Matilda. Wow, well, um, yeah. That's not, not as a joke, that, that's an actual <laughs> thing. It's like. Yeah. She, you know, the idea that she hits you, you're going to stay down. You are staying down, right? Well, oh. if she's anything like her dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, her dad stood up to Abaddon. I mean, that's that's pretty good going. Is Okay, he did, you know, he died, but he, he didn't run away. Did, did he? 
Did he? <laughs> did he die? <laughs> he did, yeah. No, he didn't. Yeah. He's Trazen's dead. got him. Trazen's yeah, got that's his... right. Yes, that's right. Trazen's got his body. Trazen's so... got his body. I mean, he's dead. Mm-hmm. Well, but that's right. Trazen's I thought we know he's dead. Body. Yeah. yeah. And... Trazen nicked his body. Can't you just go like Necron Tech, woo woo, bring him of back to life, or at least stitch him back together and like. Of course psychic you thing. can. There's it's always fine. ways of doing that in this yeah. kind of universe. Anybody can come back. Nah, nah there's, there's always ways and means. There's but always it, ways and means. If we go down the page, there's a, a picture that I would like to talk to Andy about. Um, and it's a, a picture of lots of different tanks and just all, all set up. All, oh, all there it is. Yes, yeah, I just want to know. Does Andy uh, does Andy feel all a quiver looking at this picture, being a guardsman? Uh, I I feel like concerned for the amount of money that's on this page. Yeah, there's a lot of money there because <laughs> there, there's a lot of forge world here. Because yep. there's like one bane blade, and then there are forge like two big forge world tanks. And mm. these are like the big forge world items. Yeah, these I don't even like know what they're called. The insane priced ones. These yeah. are. Are I these the five hundred, the six hundred pound ones? Because they're just mm. fat resin. So how yeah. much they are, or more? I think, so. I think they're more than that. These ones. Oh my god, probably. I was, I was going to say there's, uh, there's more than one bane blade. There's a, there's another one oh, right yeah. in the background. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's, there, there's more than one in the background. I think. Mm, you're probably there's right there, actually. Yeah. One, on two, there. three, three. I, I feel know. sorry for those word bearers at the front. <laughs> it's, it's only them. It's only them in the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Against all of these guys. Well, to be fair, it's the guardsmen, so they could probably wipe out like a good fifty percent of them they on their could. own. They you could, know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And the, I, I think I spy some possessed in there, so yes, they could. Yeah. It's when the big heavy tanks just start yeah. running them over. That's they could make the a good lies. dent in them, couldn't yeah, they? They could, definitely. Bless the game. <laughs> well, that, that first line of uh, Imperial Guardsmen at the very front there, oh, they're, they're all dead. Getting, yeah, they're, they're all yeah. murdered. They're, they're, they're yeah. in the meat grinder, they're dead. The uh, the Ogrins might do all right. Yeah. Um, the uh, the guys at the back there, right at the back of the tanks, they're they're, they're the sensible ones. Yeah. Yes, they're, they're the what we call ones, they they're what we call the moral support. Yeah, <laughs> okay, you can guys. do it. Yeah, they're the I... sons and daughters of the officers, aren't they? You just know it, right? <laughs> mm. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'd be too. Yeah, no shame in that. <laughs> no, I was uh, when we were walking on Warhammer World. There was a. Um, like a big uh, table like this uh, all on display and Andrew just goes how much did that cost to put together yeah. don't even think about it don't oh, no. even think no, about no. it don't. Yeah, and, uh, and the hours the hours it took to paint it as well yes oh yeah yes. Yes. Warhammer there's, World they're painted very well so it's not like mm, they just crack them yeah. out quickly there's a um, uh, a bone fortress one of the bone reaper fortresses on display yes I've walk, seen that you walk around it and there's like you can see into the rooms and stuff it's as you're going insane. around. insane. It is it's incredible. It's insane, that setup. Yeah. It's absolutely astonishingly good. Um, yeah. Oh, did I say that uh, uh, some guys from the um, the uh, Sanctioned Extremist podcast were there the same day that uh, oh, me and Andrew were? Cool. Um, <laughs> but we didn't know we were all there at the same time until we left. Oh! It's like a very, very weird moment. That's odd, yeah. So, moving from the uh, the chaff of the Imperium to the mm -hmm. the height of uh, what the Imperium has, we've got here a collection of forty years of Warhammer, all praise the Sisters of Battle, the, and it's yeah, Sararitas. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. really good, right? It's really good. There's a lot I... of miniatures inspired by the artwork, like directly, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. I wish I'd bought that uh, one based on the John Blanche art. I remember, like, that was the cover from the very first Codex, right? When they were originally yep. introduced as a new army in 40k in second ed. That's right, yeah. And it was huge. It was a big deal, this. Mm hmm it's... We haven't had a new Imperial army for a long, long time. This was towards the end of second ed, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah not, far off the, not far off the end of it completely, yeah. Oh, no, right, right. And it's, uh, it's one of those things where I really wish I'd bought that bloody miniature, because it's... It's, it's just good, such a piece of history. And it's like, it ah. is really good. Yeah. Mind you, the, of, of, uh, you know, of the Imperial forces, barring some of the Space Marines, I like, I've got a thing for the Adeptus Sororitas. I think that mm -hmm. like, the historical influences on them are really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot I like about them. The, uh, I like the, um, is it the Bloody Rose? Yes. Or mm -hmm. the, the Order of the Bloody Rose, mm -hmm. yeah. I've got a... I've got a weird thing for the Order of the Bloody Rose. It's just like that's uh, that's some dark shit. That's mm -hmm. 
Real dark shit. I just, I mean, the thing that gets me about the current range is more than Vile. It's the fact you've got one of the High Lords of Terror. Yes. As a miniature. I, I, I don't know. Something about that just fries my brain a bit. I mean, I know you've got you've got others as well. There's uh, Belisarius, obviously. He is the, the Fabricator General, isn't he? So nominally one of the High Lords. She's available, Gruff, if you still want her, apparently. Is she? Uh, gone to Timonkia. <laughs> oh. Well, so what's your excuse well, now? Oh, yeah, you're going to have to get her now, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm hosted by my own petard. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> Which is a very Adeptus Sonoritas thing, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, very true. Yeah. Links in the Discord, apparently, if you, if you want to get that. <laughs> okay, I will check it out later on. I don't want to touch anything right now because I might break something. Wise. Um, but uh, I will look at that later on. All of these characters are ace, actually. Every single one of them is just <laughs> something well, else, right? Demonifuge. Yeah, obviously. Mm, good old uh, Sister Stern. That's, yeah. Uh, oh, God, I love that comic so much. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's one of the things we were meant to do, wasn't it? Was uh, mm -hmm. We were going to go through Demonifuge. Um, yeah, yeah, at one point. Yeah. We really Still can, when time yep. comes. Yeah, I'm yep. up for that. I like Demonifuge. Well, what I need to do yeah. is arrange with you guys a, like a Saturday where we can just sit and belt out like three three shows. <laughs> yeah, three pa Patreon shows, yeah. Yep. And we yeah, can just kind of go that, that way. So that's uh, that sounds like a plan to me. Have you seen uh, uh, more than Val at all? A, like in tenth ed play, in a game? I haven't. Woof, woof. She's a yeah. She's like greater demon level. She's a she's a beast. Mm -hmm. She yeah. is a beast, as you'd expect. You know, there was a when the Sisters of Battle started coming up. There was a a moment of weakness where I really was thinking, I'm going to go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a Sisters of Battle army, um, <laughs> and I, I didn't, um, <laughs> because I think, if memory serves me right, I had a, a honeymoon to pay for. Uh, uh, yes, well, <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing, isn't it? It's either like honeymoon or 40k, you cannot do both. Yeah, and I think if I'd spent the money on the 40k, we didn't go to honeymoon, I wouldn't have been getting married. No, so, uh, no, so, uh, <laughs> that was so, the choice, right? So, sensible options, sensible yeah. options. <laughs> yeah. Much as they may hurt sometimes, sensible <laughs> options. <laughs> Shall we move on to the uh, the little um, divergent painting suggestions? Yeah, because sure. I thought that was this was just a really this cool is little fun, thing, wasn't it? Mm. This is nice actually, and this, I like them shaking it up. I like the fact that it's not just the prescribed paint schemes, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's really cool just seeing how different people take to uh, to doing different things. Yeah, um, and the way it, like the different paint schemes alter the dynamic of these miniatures like really profoundly. Oh, absolutely. I mean the the auric, the fucking Bastards painted the pupils on the Oryx yeah, eyes. Yeah, it's so of good. Of course right? I mean, the, the corroded metal on, on him is, is it's gorgeous. It's lovely. It's really lovely. But the, I love that one... Death Leaper that looks like made of bubble gum. It looks like oh, it's yeah. edible, right? That's yeah. sweetie. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna lick it. I wanna yeah. lick it. It, 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 it. I'm getting like a synesthesia thing looking mm. at it. I can taste bubble gum. Yeah. Nom, 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 nom. The, my favorite one's actually the, uh, the Underworld um, Undead. Yeah, that they green are is phenomenal, spectacular. They? Yeah. they look so good. Yeah, they're uh, beautiful. And the uh, the avatar of Kane that's got a... Oh, Jesus. Mm. I like alternative avatar paint schemes rather than just the, the you know the standard, yeah. it's red. Um, and this works. <laughs> this is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big, big, big fan of that avatar. I think it's uh, spectacular. You know, I like it's... the idea of it having internal fire. The yeah. fire being on the inside somehow works for mm. me. Very Balrog-y. Very, very. It makes me think of like Harryhausen and things like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Talos. It's got that yeah. Talos yeah. thing, right, from Jason and the Argonauts. That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, anything that makes me think of Ray Harryhausen is automatically it's, a winner yeah, in my eyes. Automatically brilliant. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. It's, it's done, right? I've got to get that miniature, the Avatar, at some point. I had the Mike Mouve one. I know, mm. you know, one of the first I ever painted up properly, that was. So oh, I've got to do this one. I'm going to do the bad head, though. I love the bad yeah. head with the wild hair. I think it looks great. It looks more feral, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks more like a god of war to me. I, you know, it's, it's the feral aspect of the god of war, and I like that very much. <laughs> right, and that's all the 40k stuff. Whoa. So uh, let, let's just quickly have a little bit of surprise. It's like, ooh, there's less 40k than there that, is, there is Age, the of Age of Sigma. Yeah, oh, shocking. What a, what a shock, eh? Mm. 
Of course, all the Age of Sigma stuff, bar one, is the Cities of Sigma. So we'll, of we'll, we'll kind of burn through this as, uh, yeah, as quickly as we can. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Right, I think so. So uh, we kick off with two of the Cities of Sigma and see the wonders of the mortal realm. This is this. nice. Yeah. I like L- this a lot. Little posters. Yeah. I love them. Like, yeah. Almost like they're from, like, you know, British seaside towns. It's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see lovely Lakeside Lethys, which was, of course, the... Uh, the lake that bubbled and boiled and all the uh, the night horn came out of at the beginning of the soul wars mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah this is in shyish by the way so it's like yeah. full of dead things uh the vindicarium uh city of faith and song like, i like how in that one there's just a slum town on the bottom um, yep. yeah right that says it all doesn't it that's a yeah. very clever piece of art that is because oh. it's showing you like sigmar's grand civilization and then it's showing you the reality of it the price mm. of it it's really really clever i like Od- that oddly enough i think if you just change the iconography uh this is um terror isn't it mm, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely i mean you could mistake that for terror couldn't you yeah <laughs> you absolutely could. Oh uh, yeah, I really like the one further down, which is the scorching weather in magical times await in towering hollow heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, <God's sake. laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's great. They, they mm. are selling this hard, aren't they? The cities of they are. This is they like are. the biggest thing to happen to AOS for a long time, right? Oh, absolutely, it is. I mean, the this is Age of Sigma finally getting some traction mm. again. Um, and it's the first time since third got announced, you know. Yeah. Um, the, there were five. Sto- Did you guys know that there were five stories came out mm-hmm. leading up to the uh, the Harbingers? Yeah. No. Yeah, 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 I know. I still need to get that book. To be honest, the Harbingers one. I really want it. I want it because you know it's a AOS narrative campaign, and they are traditionally very good. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Also, it's uh, ugly. It's nerdly, and I'm in that mood at the moment. So, uh, the uh, the short stories, by the way, are fantastic, and I'm releasing them one a week um, on Saturdays on the YouTube. Um, cool. I've cool. done the first three now, and I think f- the three will be out this Saturday. F- three was out last Saturday. Four will be out next Saturday. Excellent. So, uh, I think it was only five. I was like, I am both relieved and disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, next up, the Cities of Sigma raise your wheels in prayer for the Pontifex Zenestra. One of my favourite miniatures from the range thus far that's been released. I th- I think this looks fantastic. I love it. One of the things that is absolutely jumping out at me about the Cities of Sigma stuff is all of this weird things that are happening in the background. Yeah. Like, some miniatures have the dead with them. They carry mm-hmm. the dead around with them. Yeah. Some of them have weird little creatures, these gargoyleans that are yeah. running around with them. But my favourite one, and I don't understand why it's my favourite, but I love it, is the wheel. Do you, you guys notice this? What are we looking there's, at? There's something about a wheel in a lot of these miniatures, the great wheel. Oh, so interesting. There's like, they are worshipping Sigma in the form of a great wheel. Ah. But all the stuff that worships it isn't wheeled. It's all being carried. <laughs> the wheel <laughs> is part of the decoration. It's not... It's not an actual be, functional yeah. wheel. Yeah, it's a no. symbolic wheel. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yes, the I, matriarch of the great wheel. Yeah. yeah. And I love this. I love the idea of a wheel being fetishized to the point where they don't use them it's like um the the uh, indian cows you know the, mm-hmm. the cows are uh, worshipped you don't touch them you just leave them to go it's the same kind of thing but with a wheel mm-hmm. and it, it's wonderful the cult of the great wheel it's yeah. brilliant alongside oh, the, the the griffin rider this is obviously one of the big characters yes the, the cities of the sigma yeah. she can do a lot as well i mean the stuff she does in the game is awesome mm-hmm She's like, um, she's a bu- she. She buffs, doesn't she? She's just massive buffs for the uh, the the for the the whole army. Yes, yes. So, uh, what she basically does is she sits with the um, like the big units, mm-hmm. and they get a hell of a lot. So, yeah. uh, for example, there's a a ward of four plus, so she can save is, against magical attacks. That's nasty. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. real nasty. That's um, really nasty. You very rarely get ward saves of four plus in third ed. I can tell mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. I, I have a I have a question. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. You know the image I've got. Uh, we've got on screen at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yes. What What are the things next to the uh, the big uh, crypt horrors? Hang on, let me okay, have a look. Peak next to the big crypt horrors. We've got the big yeah. crypt horror. What are they? The guys with the axes. Are we looking? No, at? No, no, no. They're in the foreground. Are those new crypt uh, ghouls? They are. Oh, they may be. Yes. They are not the shitty little hunchbacks. They've got a bit. They're still hunched, but they've got mm, a lot more interesting new, detail and different. bones. Yep. Yeah. And we did see. Uh, we did see the the rumored sprue go up mm, uh, a week oh, or so well ago. Spotted, Andy. Thank you. Good. Good, good catch there, mate. Yeah, it's just like, hang on. I don't remember them looking like that. <laughs> no. They were a lot smaller. <laughs> good catch. Yeah, wow. so there we go. Now, 100% confirmed, uh, new crypt uh, <laughs> ghouls are coming, and oh, they're going to look like it. that. <laughs> oh, God. I'm actually sad to see those go, to be honest. I've got I mean, loads of them if you want them. <laughs> oh, no, no. I don't, <laughs> I don't want any. I just, You're not uh, that I've got a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. It's, the, the arms of those things have been used for so many customs yeah. and things over the years. that uh, Many, 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 many conversions. Mm-hmm. I've used the arms, I've used the bodies, I've used them, yeah. all of them for so many different things over the years. It's like, I've even, oh. because they have, when you cut them up, they've got brilliant like midriffs. So I've mm-hmm. used them in my Slanesh Marines. I've cut the midriffs out <laughs> and like glued them to the torsos and abdomens of space marines so they've got bad midriffs, you know. Did you ever add little tails to them, Gruff, and make them into <laughs> slave rats? That's a nice idea. Even slaves. Because yes. they're quite That's small, nice right? Idea. Yeah. Um I have my They look very scaveny, don't they? So yeah. Way, 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 way back when, when these guys first came out and that plague monk uh box set first came out, I used the ghouls to make plague monks. So they had the rat heads um, on their bodies, and it just gave them this really decayed look. Mm, uh, makes sense. Tails, Less rank the... and file as well, which we've said mm. before this gave and stuff from at this point. Well, I oh, mean, my, this, um... this is back in the days of rank and file. No. Oh. <laughs> Even more so. I mean, Monk Finn in the chat says that these, like the Cities of Sigma stuff, is definitely going to be used for 40k Imperial armies too. Oh, and gotcha. that's absolutely mm. true. Yeah, yeah, totally, right? Totally. It fits so well with yeah. that. Oh, so the the cities of Sigma are these guys, and we've said multiple times. So these need to be the 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 figurehead for Age of Sigma. Oh, I can see it happening. Forward. I can yeah. see these guys eclipsing the Stormcast, like completely eclipsing them, and oh, yeah. being popular enough to become the new sort of like uh, army of order. Mm-hmm. I hope they are popular. I Me hope too. it's not I one of those things will. like it's like when they pushed third uh, AOS yeah. and. No one really cared, in all honesty. Which is so a I'm shame, hoping... because as we've said many times yeah. before, it's the best game system. Yep, the rules oh, well, are fantastic. Yeah, but, but the box set was, you know... Yeah, yeah I think sad. that was the problem. Yeah. It's sad, because like the it, it is such a good rule set, and every battle tome is good. Every yep. single one is, like, really good. It's so frustrating. Yeah, but then Cruel Boys... <laughs> you did say that the the cool bro- boys would probably do better if they weren't painted green. I remember yep. growing up mm. on it, though, yeah. If if they had done the cruel boys and they were all hobgoblins rather than oryx and they were painted in hobgoblin colors, I think they would have done much much better. Yeah. I think having them as oryx when they look there's there's no evolution that would make that out of an auric if that they're, makes they're sense. They're stylistically very different, aren't well, they? They're completely they look... different. They're, uh, they're yeah. there's no Scared anything between them, you know. It's... They're closer to the crawlers from uh, Descent. Yeah, they very yeah. much are, aren't they? Yes, yeah. very much. And actually, and, um, pretty, I think they'd look quite good in that kind of color scheme, just like pale white. Pale, yeah, they would. They'd look creepy, yeah. wouldn't they? They'd look kind yeah. of scary, right? Yeah. That's, that's the thing. I don't think that the miniatures themselves are bad in any way, shape, or form. They just don't signify what they're yeah. trying to be, you know. Yeah. Um, it's like if you painted them in human colors and called them, like, I don't know, the twisted sons of something yeah um, because like the they're, a tri- and... they're a tribe in uh what what realm is it good they're a human yeah. tribe in good they're just kind of yeah devolved, like, like, devolved. Yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. that can work easily yeah. absolutely absolutely, um, absolutely. Uh, and of course i still haven't forgiven games workshop for making me think it was going to be the Fimir. oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was such a weird time like that bloody video comes out it's like well, that's the Fimia. That is absolutely the Fimia. Yes, it it's almost it's like, like yeah. 
Yeah. And then it just wasn't. You're like, not yeah. this well, time. Well, get fucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, um, the other centerpiece model for the Cities of Sigma. This is well, the Archaeon equivalent, isn't it? I was going to say, before we get into that, mm. the rule sets for the, um, the oh. Vessel of Sigma uh -huh. is um, what you actually get is friendly Cities of Sigma human units have a ward of 5 plus when they are within 18 units of this inch, of this unit, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so they, that's a, a thing from Magical. Uh, the Great Wheel turns, add plus two inches to the move characteristic of friendly Cities of Sigma human units on the battlefield. You given, do that with the horses. Yes, given the prevalence of the horses, that's going to be huge. Because, like, <laughs> being able to maneuver in third ed is the thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's, it's so good. I mean, like, you look at how well the Hedonites are doing. And mm -hmm. it's because they're the fastest army in the game, barring yep. like the Lumineth, you know. It's like they are so crazy maneuverable, it's 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 actually a little bit bonkers. And my personal favorite rule, cast out evil. Roll the dice for each enemy, wizard, and priest on the battlefield on a two plus. That on a two plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal <gasps> wounds. Disciples of Zeech are not gonna like that. That murders. Murders. So, yeah, the disciples yeah. of Zeech, it's gonna absolutely friggin' murder. And the Lumineth. But it's not just um like the wizards and stuff, the priests. So the priests as well. Corn, so corn, corn are gonna get, yeah. They're going to get absolutely rammed by loads them. of the bloodbound. Yeah, absolutely. God Almighty, that's that's a nasty ability. That is. Yeah. So you you take all this, and they are the most anti chaos I've ever seen they anything are very in Warhammer. Anti chaos, aren't they? They're, they're obviously designed to be anti chaos, right? Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's incredible. I yeah, mean, that's fun. I, oh yeah, that's that's good stuff. Um. So, yeah, moving on, we've got uh, wow, Talia Vedra. Talia Vedra. Wow. She's incredible. That Chimera yeah. is, is... Oh, it's a manticore, isn't it? It's a man yeah, manticore. It's, yeah, oh my god. It's so beautiful. So wow. beautiful. They have knocked this one out of the park. Absolutely. She is stunning. I really like the fact that there's a picture here of her and all the cities of Sigma up against some Skaven, and the Skaven mm. is just like, we are so old and shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a mistake, <laughs> wasn't it? Putting them up against them, really. I mean, they are painted beautifully. <laughs> They're painted yeah. great! They are. Okay, the hell. But well, they may as well be on square bases, let's be mm. honest. Just, oh, I'm so sorry, my little rat man. I'm so, so sorry. Um, but yeah, the bloody hell, this is insane. It's so good. It's such a good miniature. Yeah, Ugh, honestly, this. I mean, we we talked about it in great detail um, not long back, but mm -hmm. holy crap, it is just insane. Yeah. Um, but there's a bit here that I really want to get into, which was so meteoric was her rise to power that many within Hamahal Akri. Uh, schemed against her, only to mm -hmm. find that the intensely pragmatic Vedra was more than a match for their political manoeuvring. Mm -hmm. On the eve of four killings, she uncovered a quartet of conspiracies against her, and in typical ruthless style beheaded the plotters before mounting their skulls on the, black, on the back of her saddle. Mm -hmm. I think I'm in love. Yeah, uh, she's great. <laughs> just... Oh my god, I cannot wait to see these things get on the table. Yeah, she is the Archaeon equivalent of this army. She is like the big centerpiece mm -hmm. miniature. She's obviously not going to be as tough as, as Archaeon or Nagash or whatever, but she's going to have some big buffing abilities. You can guarantee that. Mm. Have you guys seen the uh, the rules for Infernadine? Which, by the way, is just an amazing name. <laughs> so uh, there's a monstrous rampage. So the Venom that um, the Manticore does. Uh, pick one enemy monster that has made a charge move this turn and is in with three units of this unit. Uh, three inches of this unit. Roll a dice. On a three plus, the strike last effect applies mm. to that enemy monster until the end of the turn. That's good. That's really good. It means she gets her attacks in before yep. whatever you charge her with. It's quite clever. It's quite a good uh, ability, that is. So, yeah. So you're going to send monsters at this thing because she's in a on a big monster. Yeah, clearly, and right? she's got every chance of murdering the shit out of them. Before, before they, they get do anything. to strike. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting, that. It's very interesting. That's... Oh, man. Have I told you guys I love the Cities of Sigma? Yeah, they, Maybe. they are yeah. shaping up very well. Mm -hmm. Sticking with the cities, then, we'll move on to the Cities of Sigma. Keep the rabble in line with a rogue's gallery of reliable heroes. Yeah, and this, this is cool. 
Yeah, we've, we've seen most of these before. We've and... seen these guys, but we've got a little a look at the rules now. <laughs> so I just saw Hated Jokes just written, I like big buffs and I cannot lie. <laughs> <laughs> I like big buffs and I cannot lie. Those other rule books don't deny. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll not rap. Um. I'm too white for that. I mean, it's funny because that's like, it does look like that's what the cities are going to be all about, right? They've got yeah. all of these scattering of little characters who are all about buffing. Yeah. yeah it's that's Imperial Guard do. kind yeah. of tactic, right? Exactly. It's what they do, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so the Free Guild Marshal, he has a deliver rousing speech. Pick up to three, three friendly cities of Sigma human units. Three units. Yeah. That's mental. Actually, oh. it is, considering what this does. Yeah. Yeah. Wholly within 18 inches of this unit. For each unit picked, roll 2d6. If the score is less or less than or equal to that unit's bravery characteristic until the end of the turn, models in that unit count as two models for the purposes of contesting objectives. Potentially ah. game-winning. Yeah. That's potentially game-winning. That's pretty bonkers, to be honest, because it's all about controlling objectives, you mm -hmm. know? And that it's... lets you do it, you know? You scatter these guys throughout your Cities of Sigma, so you've got multiple of them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... big blobs of, of infantry. So it means rabble. that a unit of 10 technically counts in terms of capturing as a unit of 20, then, uh, right? A unit of 20, yeah. 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 So it's, it's good. pretty good. And picking up to three as well? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. So if you've got three units of 10, you have 60. Yeah. That's yes. mental. It's good. It's really good. It's the kind of ability that everyone wants in, in AOS, you know? Mm -hmm. And I really want to talk about my favorite miniature that's come out over the last, so, <laughs> can we say the last five years? <laughs> the Sawbones. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's great. It's, a, it's just a Plague Doctor. That's it's great. a Plague Doctor. Yeah, it's yeah. a Plague Doctor. It, it's a Plague Doctor. And a with, War Surgeon. Yep. <laughs> with lots. Look at his backpack. With yeah. his little hands. Yeah. I love him. He's Are you going to make Elena the Crow, George? Oh, you could, couldn't you? You could try. Oh, you so could. Yeah. He'd also make a nice little cultist for Fabius Bile, wouldn't he? he yeah. Would. He would indeed. I like his lantern so you can see what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> his lantern on a stick with a little hand. Yeah. It's, it's oh, God, I it's love great. it. It's great. It's absolutely brilliant. Open wide and say, ah! <laughs> it's like, like the you know the, um, the, the war cry set that had the um, the the Dr. Frankenstein kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. this makes a better version of what that was attempting yeah. to do. It's oh, yeah, more like a Dr. Yeah. Frankenstein kind of dude. Yeah. More interesting. Well, the, the rumor is that that thing was meant to be one thing, didn't work, so they just kind of threw it, threw some bits together and threw it into uh, war cry. No. So uh, that probably explains mm. a lot about it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, this guy can uh, he He's can heal up good. to D3 wounds. Or, or return slain models, which is yeah. good. That's that's basically an undead Actually, ability. It's an undead ability, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is an undead ability. Yeah, it's Ew, good. Geez, it's taking my it's, things. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting, that is. Um, when you're dead, you're dead. You can't come back to life. That's Nagash's <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I suppose it's for, they, they go down with a big spear through them. They're not quite dead yet. And he just turns <laughs> up and says, you're not fully dead. You're just mostly dead. Um, if you uh, have one of these miracle max pills, you'll be fine. Oh, I like I the haven't... idea that he doesn't even do that. He just tells them they're not dead. And they go, oh, really? Oh, all right. Yay. <laughs> all right, then. He just pours whiskey down them. There you go. You're fine. Holy moly. I haven't read this yet. I've just read what the, uh, the Whisper Blade does. Ah, uh, the Dispatch Spies. Yeah. That is bonkers. Yeah, do you want to take it? That is insane. They have an ability to disrupt the the enemy's ability to give commands, mm -hmm. to issue commands. That's huge in yep. AOS, because commands are the thing, right? Yep. The, usually yeah. the side with the most command points and the ability to to you know to utilize commands correctly will win out. This disrupts everything. That's really good. So basically, um, you use the command point for nothing. Yeah. You waste you, the command point. That That's yeah. that's big in AOS 3rd yeah. edition. Massive. Yeah. I want wow. this mini for a vampire. It, yeah. I mean, it makes oh, a great yeah. vampire. And it's a great mini as well. It's so, like, yeah. distinct. I like how weirdly tall he is. Yeah. I, I think it's wonderful. It's strange. It's, like, odd and eye-catching. Is he tall? Yeah. 
Are you sure? Are you sure you start three people on top of each other? <laughs> in a coach, <laughs> yeah. No. I, I would love it if it turns out that this guy is actually just three halflings and they're all like yeah. cultists of Renald. Ooh, what about <laughs> if there were three um, uh, goblins? Ooh. Mm. And they did, didn't, you didn't know? They're just <laughs> working for the humans for now. <laughs> <laughs> to get the glass. I want that glass. Now, but no, is it just I mean, me or does this guy look like great. he should be saying, what are you selling? Yeah, oh, what are you actually, buying? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the guy in um the Dogs of War who had the skull mask and had the two knives and the long coat? Yes, I know oh. the one you mean. He yeah, gives like her... a Italian style name, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. It's like he... Venator or v- v- mm. something like that. I can't remember. But there's yes. something about the long coat and the skulls around the bottom half of it yep. that give me that kind of vibe. The vibe is similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the I, cities of Sigma, all the way through, have a real feel of old world imperial art, like mm-hmm. third ed Warhammer yep. mm-hmm. artwork. Yeah. Right? Not this the miniatures, guy, the artwork. Yeah, right? exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This guy just makes me think of that era. Oh, Vespero. Thank you, Monk. Ves- Vespero's Venators. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Um, wow. Good memory. Of, one of the things that really just throws at me is like these guys just remind me so much of what I fell in love with back in Third Ed. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's gorgeous, isn't it? And mm. uh, you know the fact that it's also really good. You are going to oh, yeah, want yeah. this. You're going to want this in your army. I honestly, I keep saying it, but it, it's so true. If somebody told me at the beginning of Age of Sigma that I would be camping at the bit for a human army, yeah, I'd call yeah. you mad. Yeah, oh, you had yeah. pantaloons on the brain. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not a single fucking pantaloon to be seen. I love it. Um, <laughs> and then the uh, Alchemite Warforger, who just makes them hittier. He makes them yeah. nastier. You know, and I, it's just uh, blazing weapons. Yeah, that's um, really, really good. It's exploding sixes, effectively. You know, yeah. every hit roll of a six, you get uh, inflicts a mortal wound in addition that's to good. any other damage. Mm-hmm. That's insanely good yeah the i want to know what the the downside is to these guys it's going to be well gonna it's be going to be that they're humans yeah, yeah it's going to be that they're humans so they're squishy as hell you know they're mm. going to need these buffs to compete you know if they haven't yeah. got them then they're going to suffer so any canny opponent is going to be looking at these guys and chucking everything at them <laughs> uh all right then should we move on to the free guild cavaliers Yes. Why not? Oh, holy shit. They're... Free Guild Cavaliers. Wow. Oh, the, my God, the weapons. Uh, three attacks to hit on three pluses, to wound on three pluses, minus one rend, one mm-hmm. damage. It's good. Right. Yep, that's that's a solid attack. Like It's solid, yeah. It's actually really, really good. If the this unit made a charge move in the same turn, add one to the damage characteristic of its cavalier weapons and improve the rend characteristic of its cavalier weapons by one. So that's that means, what happens to like yeah. chaos lances for yeah. chaos knights. That's really yeah. good. So when they charge, it's a uh, range of one inch, attacks three to hit three to wound three minus two rend and two mm-hmm. damage. Do you think that's just uh, going to be like a standard ability for all heavy cavalry? Because it sounds like that's what you... It should be the case, because when you mm-hmm. have heavy uh, heavy horses yeah. charging into something, it's going to be sense, nightmarishly right? damaging. Shock yeah. troops, basically. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, did, did the Blood Knights do something similar? They must I think, do. I think uh, Blood Knights have got an even better ability. They, they are yeah, really they nasty. They, they are like some of the best cavalry in the game. They are, they yeah. are like epically nasty but wow uh, yeah i mean you, you know these guys are, they're good cavalry they're really good cavalry yeah and then when you had the cavalier marshal who's got a bucket see. on his head and looks great yep i love him a bit he uh there's a slight megatron look to him that i really enjoy um i really I like, like his base i really like mm. the base i love how yeah. it's um it's, it's lifted wall, up behind right? the horse. Usually yeah. you'd have like the horse's head going upwards rather than uh-huh. the ass. But um mm-hmm. I, I, But it works, this... right? It elevates yeah. the guy and it, it really works. It really, it, really works. He's leading slightly back in the saddle, so it just gives him this really good look. Does anybody uh, want to model a cities of Sigma like cavalry army that has no cavalry and it just has guys with empty halves of coconut banging them together? <laughs> I, I didn't until just now. <laughs> <laughs> Message for you, sir. See, what I was actually thinking would be quite cool is replacing all the horses with like weird, weird creatures. So you're <laughs> just like riding around on like bizarre badgers and things like that. Well, that, that would make sense. 
Mm -hmm. That would actually make sense because, like, you know, surely you'd get different styles of cavalry from the different realms and the different, oh, yeah. you know, areas and whatnot. That yeah. Sort of makes sense to me. Ghost horses, crabs, Go oh, big crabs. Yeah, why not? No, small crabs. The, oh, like the size <laughs> of the crab from the the, the war cry set. <laughs> so <laughs> so just crab under each. on them. Yeah, With a crab under each foot. Yeah. With just one yeah. foot. <laughs> They're balancing. And the um, they show off the sprue here, which has got all sorts of things. God, it's it's right. a proper like present day Games Workshop sprue, isn't it? This with loads of little details and. Well, things. you can make two horses. Oh shit! Uh -huh. It's got a snail with a horn. Oh, it's overpowered. <laughs> I love the gargoyles, guys. I I adore them, and this one of the things that's really these this has been made to combat turnip 28 i'm telling you right now <laughs> they're, they're trying to get the turnip 28 people in um that's why they got going there but yeah so this guy you can build two different horses so mm -hmm. you've got a spare horse at the end of it <laughs> that's cool that's cool and uh, you know the the number of combinations you've got here mm -hmm. of all the different bits it's really clever it's a very clever kit that where like no two miniatures are going to be the same right no well you can do all sorts with them, and I will. Oh my god, mm -hmm. is that a skeleton horse head? Where? It is. Oh, yeah, um, there's a skeletal horse head. That would be for Shyish, I would assume. It looks certainly looks like a silver horse head to me. Mm -hmm. Which um, image? So it's in the sprue. Picture of the sprue. Um, first the single the sprue, sprue or the double? Uh, oh, the, this sing is the single one. Single okay. sprue. Um, just above the double, and it's in the top part. Oh, yeah, there it the is. Legs. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah, that's now, definitely she, a skeletal hell set. Yeah, she, she and steed. Very yeah. cool. Now, one of the things I thought about doing was a um, uh, a undead, um, friendly undead army using the Sigma. <laughs> Sigma. Well, why not, right? I mean, there, there are, would be shyish armies. Mm -hmm. so, so that that makes sense. Yeah, a couple of a uh, couple of good little uh, necromancers being all friendly and helpful. Considering that there are necromancers as well in this army, right? There, at yep. least there are like death priests or like yeah, the, yeah. The, the the equivalent of necromancers. We even have zombie mm. accomplices. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like God, the gash is not going to be pleased about that, is he? I'm hoping that that's wow. going to be what um, the next one is. Because I know that uh, we've had um, chaos in the first one, corn mm -hmm. basically. Yep. Uh, second Ed was undead. It was Nagash's yeah. rise and um, attack. And then third one's been Rise of the Beast in theory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in theory fourth only. one. Fourth one. What are we going to see as AOS four? What's going to be the? Mm, the what's going to be like the narrative thing? What's mm. going to like, Shadow Elves? Yeah. Finally, Malarion's going to yes, do something. Yes, Malarion. Yeah. Oh come on. They've got to <laughs> surely. That would be my guess. That would definitely be my guess. Yeah, the because um, uh, we've we've had the name for them for ages, the Umbraneth, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we also had the fucking Chaos Dwarfs for ages. And... That's oh, true. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, so we've got only a few left now for the Sigma. Mm -hmm. um, this is the a really, 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 set, really right. quick one. Yeah, it's just the box. Jesus, that, uh, went on pre-order on Saturday, and you're buying it, Gruff. I am. Are not, you going to get it? I have no money, but oh. I will. I will have, be getting. You had the... vouchers, didn't you? Warhammer vouchers. Yeah, but I spent them on centaurs. You oh, bloody and fool! I, and it's got <laughs> the, the special edition book in it as well, which is, that is fantastic, fantastic, right? Yeah. I mean, what's the the price on this thing? I never actually looked. I haven't looked at the price. I'm sure it's expensive. Three pounds. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to say ninety. I would say ninety. Yeah, I'd say more. Mm, I think it's going to yeah. be more than that. To be yeah, honest, I think it's going to be a wee bit more than that. Yeah. But it's a—I mean, it's a great set. It's it great is great, absolutely, and it's a great starting point, and I really like it. Also, you get the uh, the Vanguard for the Seraphon, <coughs> sorry, which again, oh. lovely re-release, right? Yep. These guys are fabulous. Yeah, absolutely. you still got to bully your mate into buying this. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I've been sending this picture to Ben every day, every morning of every day. Um, Is he breaking? Slowly, slowly. Yeah. Uh, so then we've got two round tables. Part one was designing the miniatures, uh, explaining how they hit a lot of the different uh, aspects of them. And I really enjoyed watching these, to be honest. They were fun, weren't they? They mm. were really fun. This has been such an involved project for them. 
It has, and I hope that this is what they're going to do going forward for everything. Yeah, I love this stuff. I remember they used to do this in White Dwarf. In fact, they used to do these in the Codices. Do you remember, like, yep. in Second Ed, there were, like, army books that had design notes and things in them. I remember. And, like, articles, yeah. like, essays from the the writers and miniature designers about what they were trying to achieve. It was so... I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a, a part of this that I really enjoyed. I'm just going to find it for you now. Here it is. Uh, before, when you had a Stormcast Eternal next to an Iron Jaws Brute, you sort of lost the baseline. When you mm -hmm. have a Free Guild Steelhem next to a Brute, you suddenly realise, oh, that Auric is huge. Mm, if you go too far boy. into Phantom, yeah, you lose that comparison point. And then underneath, they've got a picture of it. And yes, mm. absolutely yes. That's really cool, isn't it? Mm. Just gives you a sense of like how big these things are. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, God, I can't wait for this book to come out. I wonder if um, the skeletons are going to be taller than them. Because <laughs> that, would, that would be confusing. That would be amusing, wouldn't it? That would be very amusing. I hope they are. <laughs> Just as one of the the great mysteries of the mortal realm. Yeah, Why when you die, yeah, you when get you bigger. die, you just get bigger. Yeah, you, you get bigger. <laughs> There's good calcium in the ground. What can I Clearly, tell you? right? Clearly, yeah. that necromancy it ain't off good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Once you die, you get healthier. What? Hang yeah, on. clearly. Um, and yep, then there's another round table which is getting into the background of the story. Now, of course, me being me, this is where I really started mm -hmm. to, to get desperately excited. Yeah, this um, is the interesting stuff, right? Yeah, because, oh my god, there's so much stuff in here. The artwork, frigging hell. This is this is it. This is what I've been waiting for from AOS. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, what does it look like to live here, right? Mm -hmm. And now we know. This is so narrative. It's like sparking stuff in my brain. My storyteller's craw is going crazy with this stuff. God, I the, the big floating crystals. Love it. Love oh. it. What is going on? The the bazaar at the bottom, you know, in the big plaza. Yeah. Oh my god, that's it. It's so it's so emotive, you know, it's mm. evocative and brilliant. I love it to bits. What I'm really getting from this is the sheer scale of Age of Sigma, which is it's one of those things where you get the scale in the narrative, but you don't really get to see it very often, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. When yeah. you do see it, it's gods versus gods. You yeah. don't get to see it from the human point of view. Right. And being able to get the human point of view of the sheer scale of mortal realms, it is... Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, it makes me so happy. I think it's, it's because it's... also, like, with the old world, it was just... You know, it's Earth. It's Earth, yeah. but medieval, and yeah. there's a few weird yeah. bits here and there, but for the most part, those weird bits, we've got images of them. Yes, you kind of know what it's like. Yeah. With AOS, because it's quote, quote, high fantasy. Yep. You, you, yeah. I don't know. No, you <laughs> they don't right. even know I, what the I, full map really looks like. Exactly. So if you don't know what the full map really looks like, there's no way that you know what these weird concepts are going to be like yeah, either. Unless it's unbounded, drawn. isn't it? It's yeah. unbounded. You can kind of do what you like. I think you're absolutely right, Andy. The thing with like the fantasy battle, the old world, is that it was very much compromised. I, I don't know if that's the right word. It was bounded. It had parameters placed upon it by its historical wargaming roots. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas well, this think... doesn't. It's, it's so unbounded. I think what would... The best way of looking at it would be that it was a a, a grime and mud setting that magic mm. came into, yeah. rather than mortal realms, which is born mm. of magic, made of magic, and, right? Yeah. And whilst you had a lot of the weird in or in Warhammer Fantasy Battles, it was always delegated to the novels, or it was it contained, was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. Mm. and that's. I mean, there there's some truly wonderful bits of weird in. Mm. Uh, World War and Fantasy Battle. I mean, the Great Moor, for example, mm -hmm. the uh, the but meteorite. But that's easy enough to that's easy enough to get your head around. Like a Great yeah. Moor, it's just a big hole in the ground with teeth, and you got all oh, the yeah, Sarlacc yeah. pit. You know, okay, fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. The meteorite. Ah, it's a big meteorite that's green. Yeah. Fair enough. No, I can, absolutely. I can visualize that. But when yeah. you've told me about um, some of the, the the stories where it's like there's a a, a, a a city on the back of a weird creature, and they yeah. live yeah. off the hair of it. It's like that, yeah, that's harder to bring into to your visualize. mind what that would be yeah. what would it like, be like would it yeah. does it look like uh the um disc world does it yeah. look like that does it look like something else I, I don't you, know. You, that's it i think that's it Andy. i think that is it that is like the fundamental appeal 
of this mm. world of this multiverse if you like that's why uh, we just, need artists we need more artists doing more yeah, things for it no not that it's easy to do but it's it's necessary but it's fun isn't it and that you get yeah. this stuff you get this stuff which is so good so so good and obviously a little bit inspired again as a lot of aos is i think from the by the from software games you know oh yeah <laughs> some well, of this a... architecture some of these concepts yeah i could see these in elden ring or rather i have seen these in elden <laughs> ring and they've just been translated <laughs> to, to warhammer you know <laughs> well it's that modern take isn't it and that's uh that's the interesting thing that everything has come into a uh the head of all, all these different um ideas and concepts have finally been coalesced into one mm -hmm. big hole and yeah. now we're getting to see it we're getting to see what they do it's so um, much more distinct than the old world was that's what i get from it. it's so yeah. much more its own thing it is not like it's not as derivative well, as the old world was in a lot of ways it feels like mordheim being pushed to its ultimate degree uh -huh. you know if you think about like the art in the mordheim robot yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, which was very much a um, it wasn't a signifier of what was actually happening in the world. It was to get the feeling across, to get that uh, oppressive Gothic feel yeah. of the city of Mordheim. But you look at a lot of this, and you can see how that idea—not the not Mordheim itself—it's not a one-for-one -one inspiration. It's the ethos, inspiration. It? Yeah. It's the ethos it, rather. And there's stuff here that it, it feels like it wouldn't be out of place in what they were doing way, way, way back at the very beginning of Warhammer. Mm, when it was weirder, yeah. right? When yeah, it was stranger, when it was much yeah. weirder before it got coalesced into one um, one concrete idea. One yeah, concrete I suppose concept. before they got the map down, right? Before yeah. it was before it was a a, a defined world. Uh, it just and for me, it works better. It just does for my personal tastes and mm. aesthetics when it comes to fantasy. It just works better like this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, what's really cool as well is that I'm going to place a bet now that people playing games like, like the Living Mordheim rulebook, they're going to be buying the shit out of the Cities of Sigma. Mm, I think so. I think so. So, uh, final story for tonight. There's a new Auric coming, and much to my surprise, he's not a brute. He's a an odd boy. Yeah. Now, Did you see this... the meme image of the really big uh, hard boy and he's like, don't talk to me and my son ever again? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> no, I wish I had him, but I saw it and I was like, oh, it's really cute because this guy was so small next to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited by this because it means that the Yard Boys are finally getting a redesign. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because if you remember, the Yard Boys are Black Orcs. Yep. Yes. So the Black Orc miniatures. So that means that they're, they're obviously heading back over to the old world, which means mm. we're getting new Ard Boys. Yeah. Which is great because I hate <laughs> the Black Orcs <laughs> as Ard Boys. It breaks the um, the battered pig iron look that the, uh -huh. these guys have all got. So, yeah, I'm excited. And I freaking love his mask. He's very nice. He's a lovely mini. Lots of detail. Yeah. So very orky. That. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the battered iron. I just love it to bits. So I'm um, super excited because it means, yay! I'm gonna finally have some odd boys for my uh, my Auric army. <laughs> my... I don't understand how I've got an Auric army that's this big. It's huge. It's yeah, like, how did that happen, right? I, I don't know. I just like the brutes, and then that was it. <laughs> then it all went wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're showing this off as a little preview for the. Um, the Nova Open, which will be mm. next Wednesday. <laughs> Typical. Wednesday, yeah, of the course. Of right. yeah. So we're going to have to try and record on the Thursday or Friday. Yeah, it could okay. have been far worse. It could have been far worse. It could have been tomorrow. It could which have been is, tomorrow. Yeah. Which is what I thought for a, for a yes, few hours. Which yeah. has happened before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's happened twice, which... Mm. Uh, we Schedule around us, DW, you <laughs> bastards. Yeah. I can't wait, to be honest, because we're, we're obviously going to see new stuff about the new codices that are coming up for 40k. Yeah, There's going to be loads of stuff about maybe the, the reveal of the next Harbingers book, something mm -hmm. like that. It's going to be very interesting. I mean, right. I, I assume that the Horus Heresy stuff is just going to be the epic, right? I'd assume that's the case, because that's yeah. the new hotness for Horus Heresy, yeah. isn't it? I would it? have thought so. That's a good question, actually, because... I would have thought so. I'd be surprised if it isn't. Yeah, pleasantly Did you surprised. You'd have thought that would have the um, Imperialis, thinking be Bobbis title. Maybe there's a few things. Mm. Maybe there'll be a mm. few like mini here or two, and then they'll do Imperialis. No, just just say walk. Uh, epic. Just say epic. Yeah. Epic. Yeah. Let's that's not be. Yeah. Let's not be silly. Just epic. Epic sounds better. Yeah. It's definitely. easier. I'm old. Yeah. 
Let me have this. <laughs> Too many syllables. Yeah. <laughs> War cry. Epic. <laughs> Warhammer Horus Heresy Liber whatever he called it. Whatever. <laughs> I don't even remember. That's not a joke. I can't remember what's called. <laughs> okay. Uh, We're gonna start rounding things out now with the uh cool. competition. Now, do you guys have a piece of paper and a pen handy? Ah, I no, don't, I do. I'd... Unfortunately, you don't. No. You're right, George. Bloody hell! No, I don't. Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to read you out a load of names for this no, competition. No. Was to name our little star frog here, uh, <laughs> and the uh, winner will get a 3D printed bolter, uh, mm. courtesy of one Darren, who's in the chat oh, at the moment, because um, he's a good man. Very so, cool. I'm going to read out a collection of names which I have uh, put down as being my my personal favourites. Mm -hmm. These are the ones I've got in through to the uh, the last round, okay. um, so to speak. And I want you guys to tell me what your favourites are, and we will um, choose a winner tonight. Okay, cool. So we start off with Lord Croak of Fluff Hall. <laughs> oh, Wind and Willows reference. I like that. Lord Frog and Hammer. Mm-hmm. Tom Fluff, yeah. Fluff and Toad the Magnificent. <laughs> Jai. <laughs> Matt put that down, didn't he? Yes, he did. I was going to say, yeah. Because he's a, he's be a right. terrible, terrible human being. Um, <laughs> the Hammer Toadington. Plague Tongue. Nugwart. <laughs> Zeecroak. Emperor Rivet. Croat Spadefoot. <laughs> Regent Crow Oak Grumblethroat. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, Lord Frogger, he who croaks in the darkness, the hop of doom, Frogger on the road of despair. Bump. Baron Greenberg. Rax <laughs> Rana Malesi Flossy. Count Hopperton. Termite, the Rainbow Lord. Bob. <laughs> Constipate Frog, arch enemy of Pooh Wolf. Frogar, the. <laughs> Frogar the Were... Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a deep cut. Anybody who doesn't know about Poo Wolf, um, I'm not singing. I'm not singing that song. No, I'm not no, singing no, it. No. Uh, Frogar the Wary. Uh, I think that's yep, yeah, that's them all. I like the uh, the really polysyllabic one where it was Lord. What was it, Lord? Gr Grumble Throat. That was my favorite. Loved one. Loved it. That's my favorite one. I look Regent. at this frog's eyes and I see I see a grumble throat. Yeah, gr Lord Grumble Throat is excellent. I'm just quickly checking to make sure that I haven't lost any because my uh, my little notes have gone all weird. Well, what um, was your favourite gruff? We've said ours. My favourite was Grumble Throat, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that might be a uh, a complete three for three. Uh, yep, that's them all. So. Are we in full agreement then that uh, Regent Crow Oak Grumblethroat is the name of our little star frog? I as like long that. as we can shorten it down every now and again to Grumblethroat. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm for that. Uh, so that means the winner is one Richard Sharpo Sharp. Hey! Uh, we shall. I'll uh, get in contact with him and sort that out so he can win his prize. Oh, that's, brilliant. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you very much for entering that. That was. Uh, that I've got to admit though, Baron Greenberg did get me. It's <laughs> not bad. Yeah, yeah. Baron Danger Greenberg. Mouse reference, yeah, know. Baron Greenberg came very, very close. That was, that was very, very close to my favourite. Um, but no, I, I quite like Crow Oak because it's C R O apostrophe capital O A K. So it's Crow Oak, which <laughs> I quite liked. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's us then for this evening. I shall begin with Andy. Andy, ah. where can people find you if they so wish to beat you to death and steal your flesh? Uh, you can find me on the Moonbeam Soup podcast. That's true. <laughs> it's okay. I don't need. I don't need it. I flesh he doesn't is a, need it, does he? So like, you know. flesh is a transient thing, George. It is for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can find me on the Moonbase 2 podcast where me and my buddy Mikey talk about Transformers each and every week. Uh, also on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube as Decayed Andy. Uh, that's a rotten corpse of a human being, Decayed, not a 10 year period. Don't make the mistake. And uh, I think that that's the main stuff. That's uh, the main goo done. Excellent stuff. Yeah. George, if people wanted to use an oversized butterfly net to capture you and learn all of your secrets in some kind of weird rite known only to mice and frogs, where. <coughs> Oh dear! Oh no! Oh dear! <laughs> the frogs Struck down by they got Noble. me. 
Uh, He's got the grumble throat. Yes, uh, yeah. he has it. Ah. Uh, I've just swallowed a spearmint polo. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Um, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on YouTube at Exaggerated Elegy and uh, Our Lives in Horror, two separate channels. Uh, you can find links to all of my published work over at strangeplaygrounds.com or if you go over to the Evil Empire of Amazon and put in George Daniel Lee, you'll find my short story collections, of which there are quite a few now. If you go, if you'd be so kind as to hop over to Arrow Films, uh, you will find the pre-order for a new Hellraiser Blu-ray set uh, on which uh, myself and my colleague Kit Power feature in an extra on the Hellbound disc uh, called Hell is What They Wanted, which was very, very cool. And for the... I'm not jealous. Not no, jealous all all. Right. no, no. no. <laughs> for the time being, you can find me over on Twitter. I'm not calling it the other name. Um, <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts, that enigmatic elegy. Yes. Uh, as for myself, you can find the Fluff and Hammer at thefluffandhammer.com, obviously. Oh. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, Blue Sky, on Threads, on Instagram, on Reddit. Uh, is that everything? On Discord as well. We have a Discord as well. Um, Just scattered uh, over the internet. Honestly, everywhere. at this point in time, every morning when I put out the uh, the article for the day, I have to like go through a list in my brain of. Uh, it's like yes, fractal. Yes. It's like Zeech's labyrinth, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm an idiot. Is the, the best way to describe it. Um, I need to. Uh, I might have to like take a step back from one or two of them just to, um, for my own sanity. Hey, it's good. Mm. It's the widest spread possible. Ah, true, very true. But it also takes me up fifteen minutes first thing in the morning, and when I'm drinking my coffee, whilst a small boy is like sitting on my head, going, "I want to watch Baby Bluey." You're not gonna fucking watch Blue Baby fucking Bluey. You can watch actual Bluey. Actual <laughs> Bluey is good. I don't want to watch this fucking guy put on this stupid Australian accent, pretending that he is Bluey's dad. It drives me up the wall. And no, you can't <laughs> watch Ryan's World either. That drives me insane. And if you even bring up the Fucking Nikki and Kai shit. I'm going to lose my rag and then eat the TV out of sheer frustration. Fuck you, YouTube. Why don't you just get rid of this bullshit? <sighs> Money in it. You can also find me on Discord. Um, <laughs> personally, you can find me at adnickel.weebly.com, which has all of my personal uh, non fluff and hammer stuff, which is art, short stories, and a audiobook which goes through the entirety of the history of the 2D fighter, um, which was a lot of fun to put together oh, 10 stuff. years ago now. That's, oh, my that's, God. Wow. Oh, I know, I know. I, I did that 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, so Which now it, it needs to be extended, technically. Uh, no, because it's all about the um, the beginnings, how it all oh, comes oh, together. Oh, just the history of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, so it's right. not like the, the full history right up until now. It's the um, uh, uh, the amalgamation of all these different things that happened that came together to make uh, 2D fighters. Um, right, right. Uh, it's now up there for free uh, because it's old and uh, the equipment I was using is long gone and <laughs> I feel bad about trying to sell it anymore so it's now up there for free um, I do need to do more stuff like that if, when Joseph is like 10 uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, and uh, that's all of our things I hope you've enjoyed the show tonight I know I have it's I'm going to assume George has and uh, Andy it's hard to tell <laughs> The, uh, it's the, the lack of facial of... expression, yeah, isn't it? That's it what it it's, is. It's, it's the lack of facial muscles that have all and been And the lack of away. face, in fact. <laughs> yeah. Your, your lack of face makes it hard for you to know if you're you're happy or not. Uh, I need a little sign that just says, happy. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, all that being said, then, we're going to get out of here. Thank you very much for listening, if indeed yes, you still are. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Good night. Bye-bye. Yeah, I